we've still got fuel to work with, not just with this cell that's moving through Nashville, but with the thunderstorms that are now into our Kentucky counties as well. You're starting to see this as that Skynet camera that we have, great vantage point. This one also has the audio and the sky is just it's lighting, lighting up. up. I, I just popped my head outside to take a look, Bree, and it's, it's just an incredible light show that's going on to the west, looking towards Dixon and Cheatham County. And what's very relevant about the uh, lightning that we're seeing is this is indicating that there is a lot of energy. And Bree, we're gonna about to get a tornado warning for Davidson County. Okay just came out with this storm. So folks, we have a new tornado warning that just came out. Bree's got it up on radar. I'm gonna let you go on and, and kind of uh, take that and track that, but it's moving east at 45. So this is for the southern flank of this. Again, we've seen kind of that classic structure with these severe thunderstorms and tornado warned storms tonight. So the larger purple that you see on the northern edge, hail. That's the hail signature, very heavy rain, but it's this little appendage that sort of is dropping down now on the back side of this. This is just as it's coming uh, into the western parts of Davidson County. That's where you likely have some inflow occurring. That's where we likely have some rotation. And this is moving due west towards Nashville. So it's right on top of I-40, uh, moving very quickly to the east. You said 45, 45 miles, miles per, per hour. hour to the east. All right, let's put a storm track on this. The short version is it's going to be here real fast. And so you need yeah. to be in that lowest, most interior room, uh, putting it near John C. Toon Airport. That's where uh, Sky 5 typically takes off from. Cumberland Heights in the 1244 time frame. Nashville, 1246. That's 10 minutes tops. So uh, a closer evaluation of what this storm is doing. A little bit of a contamination here because of the hail signature. Let's back this out just a little bit and switch it so we can get a better look at uh, the tornadic signature that's starting to come into town. So you started to see how that shear really picked up. We'll back it up so you've got a big picture set up from it. Uh, the station, actually, the lights are flickering. We actually, it looks like we're taking a little bit of a power hit here at News Channel 5. Don't worry, we're still with you. Uh, but it speaks to the power of the storms. You can hear the sirens going off in downtown Nashville as the storm moves closer to you. So here's a, a broader picture, that storm, the greatest area of concern, just coming out of Cheatham County into western side of Davidson County. You're seeing the lightning strikes in the back there. Uh, we continue to have the electricity flicker here at News Channel 5. It was difficult to tell from that video if those were just lightning strikes or potentially power flashes in the distance. If they were power flashes, that is even more concerned that we have a possible tornado on the ground in western parts of Davidson County moving very quickly into uh, one of our more densely populated areas. So as far as where the concern is for this rotation, it is up near uh, the Charlotte Park area, uh, Old Hickory Boulevard, uh, near Cockrell Bend, where you see these purples and these greens starting to come together. That's where we've got some significant rotation moving uh, towards the Bordeaux area, moving towards uh, Bree, there's Cumberland a Heights. funnel cloud that I just saw looking to the west from our back door on this. Okay, so that's what we can see moving towards downtown. So to give you some perspective, we are near First Tennessee Park, and where that rotation is, uh, is moving just into the northern parts of the metro area. Confirmed tornado in Davidson County, funnel cloud seen from our back door. This is as real as it gets. We've already seen what appears to be some... Uh, some power flashes, some power flashes in the distance from some of our Skynet cameras. Observe tornado. The damage threat is considerable. The hail threat is one and a quarter inch. This is moving through Davidson County. Again, you can hear the tornado sirens sounding downtown right now. The, this is moving more on the northern flank of downtown. So to give you some perspective of where this threat is, and it's looking even more impressive. Uh, I'm gonna hop over. I still wanna stay with the Skynet camera, but I also wanna show folks where this is. So downtown, here's Interstate 24. Here's the 6524 split. So I'm looking due west here. So you see this is where uh, I-40 comes into downtown. It connects with Interstate 64. It's this right here. So uh, just to the west of downtown, this will likely track through the northern portion of downtown. 
impacting uh, where that 65-24 split is, where Ellington starts to pick hey, up. Hey, uh, Bree, if you guys can hear me, I do not have IFB, but I am out here in the back with Dan. He has got Live View 2 up, and we are looking in the direction of the funnel where we get lightning flashes, lightning strikes. We are able to see this. Again, I am not able to hear you guys right now. Hopefully, you can hear me, but I'm with photojournalist Dan Blummel. We are looking uh, in a westerly direction from the back parking lot. He's with Live View 2, and we have got the actual outline what has been uh, confirmed as a tornado the funnel that we can see folks this is in davidson county right now we've been getting power flashes out here as well at times uh and lights flickering so please please you need to head to your safe place it is well direction perfect we are continuing to monitor that very closely We can hear the wind in the distance starting to pick up. So Dan, when I start to bring you back, we will end up coming uh, back uh, in the inside, uh, back inside channel five. So just kind of bear with me here, but folks, you are watching live. This is News Channel 5. I'm meteorologist Henry Rothenberg. I'm with meteorologist Bree Smith, photojournalist Dan Blummel with me. And Dan, you ready to push back. We're starting, we felt the calm before the storm. We're hearing the wind. It is indeed heading towards Channel 5. Just taking a few steps back in. Inside, no, Heavy no, inside. get inside. Folks, this is moving by the Channel 5 area as we speak. As we speak, this is moving by News Channel 5. Dan, are you getting this right now? Good. All right, folks, you need to head to your safe place. This tornado is on the ground. It is moving right by Channel 5 as we are getting close to a direct hit at the TV station. If you so this is a tornado. Power flash is around First Tennessee Park right now. This is Live View 2 as this moves through the parking lot of Channel 5. This is a direct hit. This is the inside of the tornado right now. If you are with Dan Blummel and I, this is the tornado. It is hitting Channel 5 as we speak. Okay. Right now, Henry, tornado Henry? on the ground. It Henry? is hitting Channel 5. It is hitting our TV station at this time, moving through our parking lot as it is now sliding through the area. A very large tornado that is moving through the area, very wide tornado base right now. Uh, as Dan Blummel and I continue at a safe distance, but we've seen a number of power flashes uh, with this particular tornado right now as we continue to watch it. And uh, of course, it so, continues to slide off to the east. You need to be in your safe place right now. This is on the ground. If you can still hear me, you just witnessed live as Channel 5 was directly hit by a uh, tornado, which would be the second time Henry, in station we, history we that have we've lost, been hit. That's right. So we have lost power to our lights in the studio. Everyone okay, is we, okay here at News Channel 5, but we want to give some location information specific. So you so guys, all right, you lost it. We've got, we've got a backup generator out here. So yeah, we we'll are downtown fine. on James Robinson Parkway. We are across from the Capitol. So folks, this tornado at this time is going in an easterly direction. It just moved directly east across News Channel 5 as witnessed by Dan and I. I'm not sure if we kept our on-air signal or not, which Dan was able to uh, record through Live View 2 in the are, back. We are still on the air, but to give folks some sense of the location, so this is north of downtown. This is uh, this is on the north side of downtown. So we are just north of Broadway. It's closer to uh, First Horizon Park, what was First Tennessee Park. The greatest concern for rotation now, crossing the interstate. Uh, we have lost lights in the studio, but we still have access to the maps. And I want to show you where this confirmed tornado is. It has now crossed downtown it is moving into the east nashville area this is an eerily similar path to the tornado that impacted uh downtown nashville that hit news channel 5 in 1998 and continues to move towards the east so zooming in with this mapping to give you some perspective there's downtown you see interstate 24 uh the center of circulation likely passed just north of nissan stadium you can see some of the light in the background there. You can see some of that heavy rain coming through. All right, this is right near Ellington Parkway. This is over near the pharmacy restaurant. Uh, this is moving into East Nashville. If you can hear my voice or if you know someone that lives in this area, you tell them to get down 
to the most interior room. This is a real tornado that is on the ground with visual confirmation of this, not just from our own eyes here at News Channel 5, but from uh, other sources that have confirmed this very uh, potent signature on radar. You saw how that just extended there. So to give you some storm track on this, Bailey Stem Magnet Middle School, Inglewood School over towards Dalewood, East End Preparatory School. This is closer to the 1245 time frame. This is still an incredibly powerful storm. We've got a strong hail signature on the north side of it, and then we have the tornadic signature that extends just to the south side of it. So to give you a sense of where this is as far as location of danger, Madison through Maplewood, this is this general area right here. That's where the hail signature is. Notice how close the radar is. As the storm gets closer to the radar, the signature will likely decrease. That doesn't mean the storm is weakening. It means that the radar just can't see the top of it. When it's very close to it, you can't see it. Uh, the tornado threat would be on the south side of this storm. So it would be right here. It's moving very quickly, 50 miles per hour, racing to the east. So here's a storm track on the area of concern for rotation. This is moving towards Hermitage. This is moving towards Opry. Uh, one and a quarter inch hail possible with this through Davidson. Southern portions of Sumner, Wilson. Uh, large, extremely dangerous tornado being confirmed by the National Weather Service. It does not get more real than this. Hear my voice, take action, grab your phone, and get into that lowest, most interior room. The greatest threat for rotation is now on the east side of Davidson County. The hail threat is still upwards of two inches. The rotation threat is right here. So it's just now coming very quickly, 50 miles per hour through East Nashville. Zooming in street level to give you some sense of where exactly this is. Greenwood Avenue, Russell Street, North 14th Street. So this just passed over the Five Points area and is continuing to race towards the east. Carter Avenue, Greenwood Avenue, Lytton Avenue, Fernwood Drive. These storms are absolutely racing. Here's a look at the tornado threat. Henry has just joined me in studio. Uh, clearly our number one priority is everyone here in Middle Tennessee. We want you to know that the folks here at News Channel 5 are also safe. We are making the right decisions, the smart decisions to stay safe while we let you know where this is. This storm system is looking stronger on radar and it's getting closer to the radar, uh, which is very concerning. Uh, here's a look at, I'm not sure if our cameras have popped back up. If I can walk on and show you this, I can. Okay, great. So right here is where we have the greater hail signature. It's right here as the storm system came through East Nashville. So if you are just joining us, confirmed tornado, large dangerous tornado on the ground. Uh, it was near First Horizon Park, First Tennessee Park, uh, near the Gulch area. It crossed just north of Nissan Stadium, moved into East Nashville. This is an incredibly uh, powerful, classic hook signature. It's this small appendage that looks like it's wrapping around down on itself. That's where the tornado is. North side of it, we have a significant and very real hail threat. The damage from that is going to be widespread across the area. Greatest threat for tornado, uh, for the location of that tornado is, uh, I'm zooming in just a little bit tighter, closer towards Lincoya Hills, Dalewood, the Mary Oaks area, uh, over toward Neely's Bend Road. What you see is this notching, this notching out ahead of it. That is the inflow that's getting sucked into this storm. So it's this area right here that doesn't look like anything. So the northern flank of this hail is coming down. That's causing some downdraft bursts just on the northern flank. This hooks around because warm, moist air is getting wrapped into it, which means the tornado is here. This signature is getting bigger. It is getting bigger and it's getting more impressive and it is moving closer to the radar. That means that this storm system is strengthening. Next in the path, so it's coming out of the East Nashville area. Eventually, this is gonna be near Hermitage, probably within the next two to three minutes. This is gonna be closer to the Hermitage area. I'm gonna back it up, put another storm track on it. Again, 55 miles per hour and racing, racing towards uh, Hermitage, Old Hickory, uh, right around Opry, Opry Mills. Uh, power outages are now being reported in East Nashville. Eastland Avenue Chapel, 
Uh, we have, I'm sorry, I'm getting the reports in to you. Um, significant power outages, a number of power flashes. Uh, let's take a look at our Skynet cameras. So there's still power to a good portion. This is Nissan Stadium. You can see what appears to be some emergency responder lights moving down Ellington. That's in the upper left portion of your screen. And as we continue to get those reports in, we are going to bring those to you. Here's a look at that radar. We are still concerned about this tornado. The National Weather Service has expanded that tornado warning. Uh, it now stretches through uh, uh, the parts of the Hermitage. And I just want to back this up because this tornado warning includes southern parts of Sumner County, but the rotation is just south of it. And to me, it looks like it's going to stay south of it. So it's right here and it's gonna pass through Hermitage. It's gonna get closer to Old Hickory, eventually towards Mount Juliet. Now here is the southern part of Hendersonville. So this is the Saunders Peninsula. That's the Indian Lake Peninsula. Likely some very large hail there, incredibly damaging winds. That hail threat extends all through Goodlettsville, over towards Madison, even up towards Old Hickory. This comes down now along Ellington, but the tornado threat is right here. So Hermitage, you are up next. Hermitage, Old Hickory, down lowest, most interior level of your structure. You remain under a tornado warning. This tornado is moving at 45 miles per hour. Tornado warning remains in effect till 1 a.m. And I wouldn't be surprised if the National Weather Service has to extend this as it moves further to the east. So here's another way that we look for that tornado signature. It's in this territory right here. We're gonna zoom in and get some street level mapping. This is near Stones River Road. Uh, this is really just on the doorstep of Hermitage. I mean, look how close this is. The rotation signature, uh, likely the, the heaviest hail as well. It's about a mile away from the Hermitage area. This is continuing to race towards the east. We'll take a look at the shear tracks as well. And you really see how this picked up as it approached downtown. So it's these little bullseyes that are uh, the blues that you see, the little bullseyes coming through northern parts of Davidson County. This is near Bordeaux. And then it crossed uh, right on our back doorstep. Henry saw the funnel cloud. He saw the tornado come through. Our back door looks towards First Horizon Park. So First Tennessee Park. It looks towards uh, Church Street, uh, or it looks towards Spring Street as you look to the north. And so it passed just north of that, moving due east. So it crossed Nashville, just north of Nissan Stadium. That's where you've got uh, Five Points Pharmacy uh, Burger Restaurant is over there, continuing to move to the east, closer to the Hermitage, the old Hickory area. And you can see how the core part of the center of circulation is now just south of Old Hickory. Uh, or at least from the lake, and it's moving towards the Hermitage area. Significant power outages are now being reported in Hickory Boulevard. Train spotter in Hermitage. Say that again to me, Jason. This is, say it one more time, I-40 at Stewart's Ferry. This is exit 219 in Hermitage. Uh, oh man, if you know anybody, any of those folks that are driving on the road, I certainly hope that they will pull over because this is not a storm that you want to be on the road with. Significant damage. Uh, here, uh, we want to take another look. Uh, important that we want to show you these cameras, but you got to see where the, where the center of circulation, the biggest concern is. At this point, uh, the greatest area for concern for rotation is now just southeast of the Hermitage area. The National Weather Service is planning to extend this tornado warning. Mount Juliet, this is on your doorstep. It is moving just north of I-40 very quickly to the east, it is likely possible that this is a significant EF2 or EF3 tornado. That can cause significant damage. We're talking structural damage, walls coming down. This is not a quick hitter that's gonna take some shingles with it. This is something that is dangerous and is moving through an incredibly populated area. One of our producers, uh, I'm just reading this information as I'm getting it, he was hit while he was driving in. He is okay. Um, he and others on the road had to crawl under cars to take shelter as the tornado passed, which is a terrifying story. He is all right. Everyone's okay. Everyone is all right. Uh, so there are already crews that are dispatched. Um, this is a significant, dangerous storm that's moving through the Hermitage area. At this point, it is just south of the radar, and that is going to cause the radar signature to look somewhat muddled. Don't let this 
cause uh, a sense of safety here because this thing is still on the ground. So it came through the Hermitage area, Mount Juliet. It is likely just just north of I-40, not by much. It's this area right here that's moving and it's going to continue to track likely in between the lake and Old 40. So we're going to zoom in tighter, get you some street level mapping and get uh, get you a sense of where this is. Bottom line, if you are anywhere in uh, Wilson County, eastern parts of Davidson County, down interior room, it's not just the tornado that's a threat, but the damage that it's done, power lines down, uh, there will likely cons uh, be considerable debris that folks are going to need to uh, to to um, to assess and make sure that conditions are safe. The National Weather Service office, so that big blank circle that you see just north as the line comes through, that's the National Weather Service office. It is on Old Hickory Lake. They have debris falling from the sky at the office that has been lofted up in the air by the rotation that is just south. So it's here, right near New Hope Road. We'll start kind of from a big picture. Right here, Old Lebanon, New Hope Road. This rotation, street level, is moving right on top of Eagle Trace Drive, Tanglewood Court, Melvin Road, Chandler Road, Anthony Way, Old Lebanon Dirt Road. This is gonna track just north of I-40. Uh, here is a look at the storm track from where the likely rotation is again real significant concern here that uh, this could potentially even cross an interstate so uh, as far as timing on this this puts it near rutland school in five to seven minutes puts it into beckwith school at 105 silver springs 105 uh, moving it just north towards mount juliet junior high school uh, in four minutes uh, the storm system, a significant tornado threat. Uh, do not go outside. Make sure you're in that lowest, most interior room. We talk a lot about what that room is. It's, uh, it is um, a closet on a low level. It's a bathroom on a low level. Get yourself in the bathtub. Put your hands over the back of your head and cover your head. You don't want to spend much time trying to grab things, but if you can take a blanket or a pillow and put that over the top of your head, it can help protect you from um, any debris that may happen or potentially even um, sometimes the most dangerous thing in these tornadoes is if they pick up say fence posts those can be shot through the air like projectiles somewhat and so that's a part of the reason why it's important to cover and protect your body as best you can this is just south of old hickory lake the rotation likely right along i-40 racing to the east here's an updated look at that scan it's where you see this curving around on itself near Chandler Road. Uh, this is coming towards old, uh, it's paralleling essentially Old Lebanon Dirt Road. Uh, uh, just coming into the Mount Juliet area, it's near uh, the Providence. It's likely going to pass just north of the Providence um, Shopping Center. There's also a ton of homes over there. So, what you're seeing to give you some perspective, this is over towards Charlie Daniels Park as well likely where that center of circulation is. So it's right here, the greatest concern for that tornado. The, the concentration of small buildings that you see right here, that's the Providence Shopping Center. And so then this stretches just a little further to North Charlie Daniels Park is in this general area. Uh, that's where the tornado is moving. The hail signature stretches up further north than that, but confirmed powerful tornado on the ground moving just north of I-40 at 45 miles per hour incredibly close to the radar at this point. Uh, here is an updated look at the storm track. This could potentially cross Interstate 24 or Interstate 40 as it, it moves. I was going to say it's right near Mount Juliet uh, Elementary School is what uh, even Heather was saying too because of course that's her neck of the woods as this storm continues to slide east. So Lebanon, uh, likely uh, you need to be in down in that most interior room. You know someone in the Lebanon area, you tell them to get down. This storm is on their doorstep. Uh, the confirmed tornado on the ground. Henry saw it outside. We are inside uh, at this point. The National Weather Service continues that uh, severe thunderstorm warning and tornado warning through parts of uh, Wilson County and over towards Trousdale. We'll back this up, get another look at it. Uh, the tornado signature moving close to uh, Mount Juliet Elementary 
and will continue to race off to the east. Debris, uh, metal roofing, not just noted downtown, but yeah. near the National Weather Service office as well. So yeah, and also, Bree, uh, just kind of switching over real quick uh, here and, and backing it back out. Actually, I'm going to give you a, um, uh, a view of sky cam while I get radar. Um, I, I glanced outside to see the damage from the tornado uh, as it moved through here. and. I, I kind of feel like we may be the first ever TV station to take two direct hits in history of a tornado. Um, 1998 and now 2020. Uh, but that was indeed what just happened today. Um, and there is debris and there are some metal roofing and uh, uh, even some signs that I did see around the, the TV station. Uh, from trained spotters around the Hermitage area and Old Hickory Boulevard, reports of what sounded like a train moving uh, over a house as the individual was sheltered behind furniture. So this has become a very active night, a very dangerous night. Um, the only thing that we can really hope for in this right now, aside from people, of course, taking uh, and, and heeding the warnings, is that uh, potentially that um, this cell that's intensified so rapidly will help take enough energy out of the atmosphere to really kind of give us maybe a little bit more of a break. Bottom line though, the severe threat is far from over uh, as we still got several hours of this left. And we knew this, unfortunately, that it had the potential to intensify as it moved further to the east. That is exactly what it's doing. So uh, this confirmed tornado moved through downtown Nashville, significant power flashes, power flickering at our own station. There've been reports of debris falling from the sky um, uh, closer to Old Hickory Lake. I've circled the area that's of greatest concern for possible rotation and added an additional storm track on this. So Lebanon, you are next in line. 112, uh, this is on your doorstep, Lebanon Municipal. We just saw another update with the scan. We're still seeing this very powerful hook signature uh, that kind of stretches around just to the south side of, uh, of the storm. That's where the greatest concern would be for that tornado threat. So it's right, again, you're seeing this kind of heavy leading edge surge out towards Lebanon, but it's this area right here uh, near Belinda City that would have the greater concern for rotation. It's actually that, that little blue, pink, sorry, purple area that's just north of I-40 that's flashing as it comes through. You get kind of an updated scan here. This is precariously close to an interstate precariously close. The hail signature on the northern flank of this and the storm system is moving incredibly quickly. So as these updates continue to come around, we'll get some street level mapping of what this storm is doing, where it is, who's under the gun and where it's going. So this is uh, near East Davidson Street, Rutland Drive, uh, under the gun, Hickory Ridge. This is headed towards you. I know we had a live shot as well, Jason, that you, uh, what, can you tell me again what it is? Downtown Rosa Parks. This is of damage. You can see roof damage to this structure. You can hear the warnings going off. That is a brick building and it appears the second story walls collapsed in or were knocked over at some point. Significant damage. Now tell me one more time, Jason. This is near Rosa Parks downtown. Okay, so this is not far from where Henry first saw that tornado come through. Uh, significant damage to see the second floor wall of a brick building. The roof is gone. Uh, that, I believe that's about the area that our producer, who he is okay, but uh, also took that direct hit uh, on his way in. But that was uh, about where uh, it was when photojournalist Dan Blummel and I began to see the outline of it. Um, my understanding was, I believe we had a sky cam up. It wasn't necessarily that camera that was up. And uh, from our friends at the Weather Service, that tornado is, for, by the looks of it, is still on the ground, basically riding Interstate 40 now. Yes, so this is a look at where it is. This tornado, incredibly destructive, we just showed you, took the roof off of a brick story, knocked the wall down. This is the real deal. If you know anyone that's along I-40 near Belinda City, uh, confirmed tornado on the ground. It is just eight miles west of Lebanon. It's moving east at 45 miles per hour. This may cross the interstate. It is precariously close and continues to inch closer to it. Uh, it's near East Division Street, Sullivan Bend Road. Here's a look at the storm track and then we're gonna take it down to street level. Even more specifically, Mount Olivet Church 104. Hickory Ridge Church of Christ, 111. Lebanon Municipal, 112. At this point, the tornado now likely crossing Highway 109 as it moves towards Lebanon. 
So backing it out to give you a little bit of a big picture perspective here, it's in this area, it's crossing 109. Zoom in tighter to give you a sense of the streets that are being impacted. This is Hickory Ridge Road. This is in between, you just see as that new scan came through. So Leeville Pike, Hickory Ridge Road, very powerful tornado. The National Weather Service saying that they're seeing wind speeds that would potentially indicate EF2 to EF3 damage. That is a significant, um, dangerous, destructive tornado. This is not something that will just do shingles. This is going to knock walls down like we've showed you. It's going to take roofs off of buildings. It's right here. It's just on top of I-40. This is Hickory Ridge Road. It's moving in between those two, so it has just crossed 109. Confirmed tornado on the ground nor near Lebanon, crossing 109 just north of I-40. Uh, the, the bright pink colors that you see there, those indicate wind speeds upwards of 100 miles per hour. So to give you a sense of just how strong this might be, we're looking at the potential of 100 miles per hour in either direction of shear. That solidly puts us near EF2 tornado potential strength. Taking it in just tighter to see where this is. So crossing 109, this is moving towards Hickory Ridge Road, Meandering Drive, near Leeville Pike, Eastgate Boulevard as well. Here's an updated storm track of that system as it comes through. Of course, the main concern towards the Lebanon area is uh, that this would continue to be on the ground as we move closer towards the east. Significant lightning, significant hail with this. We'll take it in just a little bit tighter, get you some street level mapping. So 109 East Division, uh, one, of our, one of our directors just came in. His home is over towards Hickory Ridge Road and he knows exactly where this is and says it's near that area. So it's just crossed 109, potentially on top of I-40 right now, near Meandering Drive. It is near uh, Whispering Oaks Drive, Meandering Drive, Leeville Pike. Selden's Place, Leeville Pike continues to move to the east very quickly. This is the only tornado warned storm that we have, uh, but it is also a confirmed, very powerful tornado on the ground moving towards the east. That tornado warning remains in effect until 1.30. The hail threat with this is around an inch and a quarter. So it has crossed Interstate 109. Here's a storm track on this. Eventually, as it moves out of Wilson County, the cell would move into parts of Smith County and DeKalb County. So an updated storm track. Lebanon, it's on your doorstep. You've got to be down in that most interior room. We talk about this a lot. If you don't have a basement, you just want to think about as many walls as you can put between you and the outside world. Sometimes that's an area underneath a stairwell. A bathroom is a great idea because the pipes can reinforce the structure in the walls and it can give the room extra safety, extra security. If you can, cover your head with a pillow. If you can't, drag a pillow or maybe a couch cushion or something that's sturdy or thick that can protect your head. You wanna think about um, at least covering it with the back of your hand. That signature now uh, in this general area right here. So again, it has crossed 109. It's in the Lebanon area. It is moving, likely tracking along I-40 just south of downtown Lebanon. So this is where the signature is right now. Very real confirmed tornado on the ground. Here's a look at an updated storm track, Lebanon High School. This is gonna be right on that doorstep in about four minutes. Here is uh, another, there's still one inch hail falling in parts of Madison at this point. It's just an incredible hail uh, story with the system. Looking like this may be crossing the interstate at this point. Where I-40 is, you can see how those bright pink colors are really starting to pop here. That would indicate wind speeds around 100 miles per hour, potentially even stronger than that. So this is right on top of I-40. Here's Leeville Pike, this storm system moving to the east. That means anyone near the interstate, just south of downtown Lebanon, this is on your doorstep. A storm that is absolutely racing towards you, uh, a significant history with hail. And of course, this confirmed tornado, we have already seen significant damage across parts of downtown Nashville. We've seen second story brick homes uh, where the wall has been blown down. The roof appears to be missing. Debris has been reported falling from the sky from the storm system five miles away from where the core of this tornado was. The National Weather Service confirming not just this tornado on the ground, but it was on the ground just west of downtown on the ground as it moved through downtown. Confirmed tornado through East Nashville, through parts of Madison, 
crossing by Old Hickory went through uh, northern parts of Mount Juliet and is now likely on the southern portion of Lebanon. Coming in just a little bit closer to tell you the streets that are likely being impacted the most from this, potentially in the most danger. Tucker's Gap Road, Willard Hagen Drive, Glide Pathway, this is moving towards Franklin Road, Kent Drive, Leeville Pike, eventually 231. This is going to be on your doorstep. So as far as downtown Lebanon, the core of circulation is passing just to the south of that, but it is precariously close to the interstate as the system moves. Uh, to give you a sense, because we do still have that hail threat, uh, that stretches through uh, parts of the northern parts of Wilson County from I-40 all the way to the northern border, uh, still having hail falling in parts of East Nashville, especially over towards the um, old Hick or uh, towards the Opry area, towards the Madison area. Of course, the tornado threat remains the biggest concern with this, and that is along that southern flank of it. So the hail's on the north side. The tornado signature is now right on top of Interstate 40. Take a look at this shear track signature. We're looking at significant gate to gate shear here that was being indicated upwards of 100 miles per hour. Showed you some of the rotation that was indicated with the storm. Still very strong, very potent circulation just south of downtown Lebanon, uh, especially where uh, Highway 70 comes through town. Uh, Tucker's Gap Road. This is also where I-40 takes that little bend, that little jog to the north. It will continue to move due east. And so if it hasn't crossed the interstate yet, and it is likely very, very close to it, it will as it heads towards Highway 231, and then it will likely continue potentially just south of I-40. So the key corridor to be concerned with is the I-40 corridor just south of Lebanon, of the downtown core area. This is a very densely populated area, and I just hope that folks are down in that lowest, most interior room. If you know someone, call them, tell them this is the real deal. Franklin Road, South Maple Street, uh, uh, Tater Peeler Road, Briskin Lane, Knoxville Avenue. Uh, these are neighborhoods in this area over here, businesses. Uh, Legacy Lane over towards West Adams, uh, South Maple Street over towards Crystal Lane, Cedarwood Drive. The path of this is going to have it potentially crossing I-40, Highway 70 in the next 5 to 10 minutes. Briskin Lane, Hutchinson Place, uh, as that would cross, it would be near the I-40-70 interchange there. Backing it up just a little bit, you can see now how the, the rotation signature just north of I-40. This is near Highway 231, Leeville Pike. Uh, just an incredibly densely populated area as far as businesses and homes. Tornado warning observed considerable for Wilson until 1.30. This warning in effect. It has now picked up some forward speed. It's moving east at 50 miles per hour. So this is uh, located near Lebanon. I'm going to uh, increase that forward speed. Get an updated track on it for you as it moves towards the east. So Spring Creek Lane, uh, University Medical Center Hospital. This is right by the hospital. It's actually just passing just to the south of it, that core area of rotation, Peyton Road, Quail Meadow Drive. Here's a look at the radar signature as it comes through. So we've got that leading edge. It's, it's sort of the notch that you see in between the two areas of the thunderstorm. That's the greatest area. It's this right here. It's a little hard to pick out with the higher rotation. The other thing to notice is that because the rain is becoming more uh, widespread, more rain wrapped, visual identification of this is going to be impossible. Don't even try it, uh, especially because it's moving at 50 miles per hour. So this heavy rain and likely some hail on the front edge of it, but it is this small, it almost looks like a ball that kind of wraps around right on top of I-40. Very real that this, uh, this tornado may be crossing an interstate at this point. And I just hope that folks are off the road as it does. So this continues to move to the east at 50 miles per hour. It is picking up forward speed. It has now been on the ground from western parts of Davidson County through Davidson County and now through northern parts of Wilson County. Here's that area of greatest concerns right where Blue, uh, Bluebird Drive, Spring Creek Lane, Bethany Lane, Tennessee Boulevard. So it's pulling away from that downtown area of uh, Lebanon, but some of the stronger area of concern now moving into Tucker's Crossroads. Uh, 
The National Weather Service extending a severe thunderstorm warning now out ahead of this for hail nearly two inches inside uh, for Davidson, Smith, Sumner, Trousdale and Wilson County until 1 30. Henry, I know you're working on getting some mapping up here so we yeah. can take a closer look at that storm system. Yeah, just trying to, I think one of my, uh, our weather computers here, Bree, which would maybe be the, uh, hopefully the extent of the damage to the station, but just kind of got a, a little bit of a, uh, a hard hit here. So we're rebooting it. Um, while that is coming up, I do want to take a look at uh, our sky. I'm going to interrupt you real yeah. quick here. So we have a trained spotter, just as I was saying with the mapping that came through. Tornado is on the ground, still on the ground. It has been on the ground for what, 30, 40 minutes now crossing Highway 70 and I-40 just east of Lebanon. So we now have a tornado on the ground that is crossing uh, an interstate. So I-70 and uh, Interstate 40 right here. So it's, uh, it's this area here that it just crossed over. It is likely on top of or just near uh, I-40 as it continues to move. It's this n sort of... Um, notched area that we were talking about earlier. So let me zoom in a little tighter, give you some more streets. Again, Bluebird Road, really under the gun here. Locust Grove Road, Bethany Lane. Uh, Bluebird Road sort of hooking just to the south of I-40. Co Lane, Locust Grove Road with very heavy rain and the potential for hail up on the leading edge of this. So confirmed tornado on the ground. Crossing Interstate 40, it just crossed Interstate 40 and Interstate 70. Hail remains a significant threat with this system. So uh, it has just now moved east of I-70 and Highway 40. So this is Highway 70 right here. You can see Interstate 40 here where you've got the pink and the green right next to each other. Reminder, that is an indication. The color represents the speed of the wind and it is picking up. It's measuring what is being uh, tossed around inside the storm. So uh, we're looking out of the Nashville radar. Red is moving away. Green is moving towards. So we have this very strong counterclockwise circulation that's right on top of I-40. It has already cro crossed multiple interstates tonight and continues to race towards the east around 50 miles per hour. Tucker's Crossroads, you're next for this. West Salisbury Road. You are down the pipeline for this. Now, I-40 will curve back to the south. This storm system will likely continue to move due east, um, and it will continue to move through, unfortunately, heavily populated areas. The hail concern remains a big threat tonight, but hands down, this con uh, confirmed, very destructive tornado is the most significant uh, threat. So the National Weather Service has now extended this tornado warning for this confirmed tornado through 145. Uh, the storm is now seven miles just east of Lebanon. It is moving at 50 miles per hour. So let's give you some perspective. Lebanon, you are in the clear. This is seven miles to your east. It is moving rapidly at 50 miles per hour and is now going to start to push into parts of uh, Smith County, potentially even northern parts of DeKalb County. So to give you some perspective here, as we sort of back it out to the big picture, it be hard to pick up these. So let's look at who's next under the pipeline or on, next under the gun. This is a look at that storm system. If it can hold together, uh, New Middleton, and I have no, no reason to think that it wouldn't hold together, 129. Tanglewood, 132. Carthage, 134. Stonewall, 136. Chestnut Mound, 141. Buffalo Valley, 144. This is going to push into parts of Smith County. Confirmed tornado on the ground. It has been on the ground for upwards of 40 minutes. It's near Tucker Crossing Road. It's right near Interstate 40, near Bluebird Road. It's racing to the east at 50 miles per hour. Here is another look at a storm track that's going to take this just north of I-40. Tucker's Crossroads, Tucker's Crossroads Elementary School. Unfortunately, this is headed right towards you. So it's still hugging Bluebird Lane. You saw another update come through here. Good Hope Church, Grant, Grant Baptist Church. This storm continues to raise off. Eventually, it'll be towards Rawls Creek Road, uh, also potentially over towards uh, North Commerce Road. I-40 is going to snake away just to the south of this, but the storm system will continue to race off towards the east. Here is a look. Henry, I think you're pulling up some of the another look at this storm system. So kind of a big picture because there are significant storms going at this point. 
Um, there is a flash flood threat across our Kentucky counties. You do need to know that. Tornado sirens are still going off in Davidson County, but Davidson County, you are in the clear. The folks that are in danger right now are folks east of Lebanon. Lebanon, you are in the clear as far as a tornado threat. There is likely damage. There is likely debris uh, scattered about on the path of this tornado. Confirmed tornado on the ground. Went through western Davidson County, eastern Davidson County. It went through east Nashville. It went through the Five Points area. It passed by Hermitage, by Old Hickory. And it continues to move on the ground towards the east very, very quickly. Uh, surrounded by significant hail reports across the area. So that tornado warning in effect for Jackson, Smith and Wilson counties now until 145. Damage reports continue to come in. We're going to get those images to you as soon as we can uh, through parts of Germantown, uh, all across East Nashville. And unfortunately, the work is really just going to begin for a lot of folks there. So the most important thing is that we focus on who is at risk next, who is in danger next, and then we continue to uh, assess the cleanup as emergency officials and emergency crews continue to work across the area. Yeah, Bree. And uh, finally, we've got uh, my weather computer back up, uh, getting damage video in from uh, Jonathan Hutton, Titans Radio. Jonathan Hutton, who also contributes to Sunday Sports Central, uh, from courtesy via uh, Jeanette Jolly. Uh, around the Madison and third area near Christie's Cookies where there is some damage from the tornado. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that to you. I just sent it down to uh, the folks in the newsroom. Want to take a look though at where the actual warning is at this time with our tornado warning that does continue. Yes, the sirens uh, are still going off in Davidson County, but let me show you that Davidson County, the tornado has passed. It is now impacting Wilson County and continues to move off to the east, Jackson and Smith counties as well. So movement uh, to the east still about uh, between 40 and 50 miles per hour. Let me go on and put another track on this for folks that will be impacted uh, with this particular storm. And we'll take that speed uh, down to, uh, again, the 45 miles per hour that it's moving right now and tracking it east right along Interstate 40. Uh, cannot give you a better visual than that. I-40, a major interstate artery. This tornado is basically just traveling right down the road at this time. Grant, it's moving into your neck of the woods. It will be there in about a minute. This is not a radar indicated. This is indicated on the ground by multiple people, including us here at News Channel 5, as this tornado, uh, once it moved through, directly hit the News Channel 5 studios in downtown Nashville. Shavertown at 125, New Middleton at 128, 133, Gordonsville, Stonewall at 136, Lancaster at 139, Chestnut Mound at 141 and 144, at Buffalo Valley, tornado on the ground, a very dangerous situation. Uh, we're getting reports of a train spotter reporting power lines down across a FedEx truck uh, and the driver potentially being trapped inside the truck. Uh, also, if any emergency personnel can hear us, we'll, we'll try and find this exact location, which is actually the FedEx Distribution Center, a Golden Bear Gateway and Volunteer Boulevard. So even the folks in the newsroom, FedEx Distribution Center, Golden Bear Gateway at Volunteer Boulevard. If you can try and contact EMS because the spotter is unable to contact EMS for a trapped FedEx driver, power lines across his vehicle. Let me say that one more time. FedEx Distribution Center. The Golden Bear Gateway at Volunteer Boulevard, um, and there is a spotter that is on scene. The driver of this FedEx vehicle is trapped. The spotter is having difficulty trying to reach EMS. Understandably so. This is the time right now. If you see smoke, if somebody is truly hurt, that's when you call 911. If you think you saw a tornado move through, please do not call 911. Right now is the time we need to keep those emergency lines cleared for emergencies such as this case. Again, FedEx Distribution Center, Golden Bear Gateway at Volunteer Boulevard. So if the folks in the newsroom can maybe even reach <coughs> out to uh, emergency personnel for that, uh, help that FedEx driver there that is trapped. So uh, we want to get some more information. The tornado is still on the ground. It's now crossing out of Wilson County and into Smith County. So we're going to take a, uh, the National Weather Service has released Wilson County. Wilson County, you are in the clear. Tornado warning no longer in effect for you, but there is significant damage and folks that need help. And so it is uh, incredibly important that you still stay in that interior room. Stay with us here at News Channel 5 as we continue to get damage reports. We're going to get take a close look at where that tornado is now and where it's going. And then we're going to check in with Chris Conti, 
who is live downtown right now to give you some first images of how this storm uh, is impacting and the damage that it did in Nashville. So here's a look at where it is. Again, it's the red and the greens close together that are the best way to see it. So uh, the, uh, the black line that goes from Flat Rock to Commerce, that is the, the county border. So this is Wilson County, this is Smith County. So it's now crossing towards Grant and the New Middleton area. It is still just north of I-40. It had crossed at one point, it crossed uh, Highway 70. It's still moving to the east. So we're gonna take a close look at the folks that are impacted by this, and we're gonna get a live look with Chris Conti as to what we're expecting or what has happened here in downtown Nashville tonight as this incredibly powerful tornado touched the ground. So roads in this path, Denny's Branch Lane, Hicks Road, Tribble Lane, uh, Kent Lane. Here's a storm track of where the greatest area of concern is moving. So Grant 125, Grant Church 125, Bluff Creek 133, Cedar Point Church 133. This is on your doorstep. We're gonna take a, a broader look. We will get that live check with Chris Conti and then we're gonna come right back to this because this is still on the ground and it is still a very real threat. So folks in the Grant area, you are under the gun. Again, Wilson County, Lebanon, Mount Juliet, Old Hickory, Hermitage, you're in the clear as far as your tornado threat, but this storm isn't done. It's moving towards um, uh, New Middleton, 128, that's two minutes, Gordonsville, 133, Chestnut Mound, 140, Granville, 143, uh, and then if it holds together, this may push even into parts of Putnam and Jackson County. So if you are in Smith County, you are down in that lowest, most interior room, the tornado is near you. It's just north of I-40, and it will be passing overhead very quickly at 50 miles per hour. Reports of significant damage with this system. We do have Chris Conti live downtown with some first looks at some of the damage that this tornado did as it came through. Chris, let us know where you are and what conditions are like there. Bree, we are at the corner of Rosa Parks and Jefferson right in Germantown, and I will be honest with you, I have never seen damage quite like this centralized in a major metropolitan area it's it's quite shocking people are standing in the street uh, trying to figure out exactly what happened here this hit at the worst possible time in the middle of the night as folks were in their beds i can see the second floor of some uh, homes here in germantown have been ripped off uh, brick foundations are laying on the ground it, it's dark out here so it's kind of hard to see and, and brie i will say if you need to interrupt us Please just go ahead because I understand things are still incredibly fluid right now. Uh, we have some Metro Fire Department officers, uh, firefighters who have just gotten here to Germantown because as Dan was mentioning, or as Henry was mentioning, there are some people who they are concerned about might actually be trapped in their homes right now. Uh, and they have been getting calls about this. There are power lines down across Rosa Parks. I, it's hard to see here, but this is the funeral home uh, that is here in Germantown. You can see it took a direct hit when those winds came through about a half an hour ago. Uh, there are a number of power poles that have just been snapped. Uh, I've seen the, where the auto zone is. Dan, I don't know if you want to come this way with me uh, back towards Rosa Parks. The auto zone basically collapsed onto itself uh, and there were a couple of cars here. Uh, folks, this is how just kind of real and raw this is. People are just out here in their pajamas uh, because they were just woken up by this terror as it came through. And you'll have to forgive me, I'm holding a light here so that we can get a better idea. There's, there's no power here in Germantown right now. And first responders are just getting here onto the scene, uh, trying to access exactly what happened. As Henry mentioned, if you are not in immediate danger right now and you are in the Nashville area, do not call 911. We understand that there are probably a lot of people who are shaken up and scared, but this is not the time to call 911 unless you are in a life-threatening situation where you need help immediately. You can see a number of buildings here that just took direct hits, uh, bricks, siding that just came off windows. Dan, I don't know if you can see the windows that were just blown out of this building. There is just debris strewn across this section of Germantown. If we can get you down to the auto zone here, you can really get a better idea of just the magnitude of the wind when it came through about an hour ago and hit directly on downtown. Bree, are we doing okay? I know that you guys still have some active warnings back we, there, so you just tell are, me if you need to interrupt me. Yeah, Chris, so uh, important to know, I know you can still hear sirens going off in the background. There is no tornado threat for Davidson County, so those sirens do not present an initial threat. There is still storms in the area. There is still heavy rain. There's still lightning and hail, but the only tornado threat right now is across parts of Smith County. And while the scenes that are coming in are just 
devastating and we continue to get reports really flooding into our newsroom of of damage like you're seeing there chris we're going to go back to chris in just a second but we also want to keep our eyes focused on the the threat right now and who's under the gun so uh, there are thunderstorms widespread across the area there is one tornado warning there are some larger severe thunderstorm warnings that encapsulate that. So folks across our Kentucky tier, it's heavy rain and thunderstorms. Not thumbing my nose at that, but this confirmed tornado is the most dangerous thing that we've got on the ground. Flooding threats significant across our Kentucky tier. Avoid flooded areas. There are more storms crossing the Mississippi River that will ride their way up I-40. So while the tornado threat remains across central parts of Smith County, it's closing in towards uh, the Granville area. This is near Carthage. It's near Gordonsville. Um, you can see the heaviest, uh, the rain, the reflectivity that stretches through Carthage here and then down towards Gordonsville right on I-40. This is likely where we have the rotation. Uh, potential hail signature that stretches even out on the further uh, eastern extent of this towards Granville. Uh, this may have to be extended even further as it goes. In general, the rotation signature has broadened out just a bit, but this is a powerful tornado that has been on the ground for over an hour. And we are just starting to see the damage reports come in, multiple reports of people needing to be rescued, um, reports of uh, a gas aroma. If that's something that you notice around your home, don't investigate that, you report it, you stay in that most interior structure. The most dangerous storm system right now is across that eastern tier. So uh, Wilson County, you're in the clear. It is still storming across northern parts of Wilson County, uh, but the tornado threat is over. So for folks that were incredibly hard hit, I know it must just be terrifying outside if it's still storming and hail is still falling from the sky. Debris was reported falling from the sky earlier tonight. These thunderstorms that you see are thunderstorms. The concern for, um, for the severe potential uh, continues east through Smith County, but I do have some good news. There isn't much good news tonight, but the National Weather Service has canceled the tornado warning. So that rotation did lift. It broadened out, but it was on the ground for over an hour. And there are some early indications that this was a significant, um, potentially catastrophic tornado that moved through downtown Nashville. EF2, EF3 strength possible with this. Uh, Chris was saying that he's never seen damage of this magnitude in um, a downtown metropolis area. There is a brief lull in the thunderstorm activity right now for Nashville. But there are more storms that are working their way up I-40. And so there is the potential that we could see more thunderstorms, even strong to severe thunderstorms, in Davidson County tonight. A flash flood warning has been issued for Cheatham, Davidson, Sumner, and Wilson counties until 3.30 because of the hail, the damage, clearly the debris blocking drains. That's going to prevent the water from being able to run off. So we now have a flood threat. And we have the damage from a confirmed tornado that went through northern Davidson County. Uh, through Wilson County and even into parts of Smith County. We're going to take uh, we're going to check back in with Chris Conti uh, as you continue to give us these just really heart stopping first looks. It, it, Bria, it just stops you in your tracks. It is almost what one in the morning, one thirty in the morning here and it there is a silence in Germantown right now and you can hear sirens in the distance and this is what you see when you get a glimpse of light. This is the auto zone here that is sitting on Rosa Parks. A lot of you probably are familiar with where we are right now. Uh, I'm trying to give photojournalist Dan Blomo a light here because as you can imagine, the power is out. The damage out here is stunning. Dan, if you want to come over here and give people a better perspective of exactly what we're talking about, the entire front facade, the uh, cement front of the auto zone actually collapsed onto itself. There was a car and someone parked uh, in front of the auto zone when this came through. A lot of people just were kind of stuck where they were when this happened about an hour ago. Uh, we did hear that the folks that were inside of this car actually got out. Dan, watch out, there's some power lines in front of you. If you want to come back towards the street with me here, uh, and we'll take you around kind of to show you what we're talking about. So when the auto zone came down on top of itself, there was a car that was right here. Wait, was this your car? Yeah, this is my car. Okay, I didn't realize that this was where you were. Uh, this is our producer, Wit, who is over here. Are you doing okay? Yeah, are we Facebook Live? Yeah, no, no, we're just on right now. Okay. Uh, what can you, I know it's kind of hard to hear. What, uh, what was it like? What happened? Did you, you just yeah. looking for safety? Um, yeah. And just look this way, the microphone's on me over okay, here. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, once I realized what has happened, you know, it took a second to process. I realized I was okay and then wanted to see 
you know, what the next steps were because obviously I was hearing sirens and that sort of thing. And so um, I could see out the window. As you can see, the windows are smashed out. And this auto zone is basically gone. So I'm super lucky to be alive, obviously. And Did the car move at all? Did, were you um, were you just no, in place? I, I didn't feel like I was lifted off the ground or anything like yeah. that. Um, what do you think just looking around at this damage? I think I'm lucky to be alive and I've got a lot to process for sure. So um, it wasn't smart to be getting out and I, I know that and I should have taken more Listen, we're just glad you're okay. Yeah. You keep, get back to where you need to be and get to sure. safety here. Dan, continue to come with me here. You can see the power lines have uh, just fallen down here on Rosa Parks. Uh, why a number of homes in this area are without power. Uh, you can see the capital in the distance here. Uh, we'll bring you back up Rosa Parks actually. Uh, where these fire trucks have started to arrive. Again, uh, this is a situation that is truly unfolding in front of us right now. We basically got here uh, before first responders. And as we were talking about earlier, Brian, we'll probably, we'll keep mentioning this. If you are listening to us right now somewhere in the Davidson County area or anywhere where this tornado went through and you are not in imminent danger, do not call 911 because right now there are situations where there are some people uh, who first responders are simply just trying to get to. We understand that a lot of people are probably terrified right now. This was a very scary situation. There is quite honestly nothing more scary than a tornado coming through in the middle of the night when you can't see it. It was rain wrapped, it was dark. Uh, but again, if you do not need help right now, do not call 911. Uh, you can see just the, the magnitude of what this wind did. And when we talk about the tornado giving Germantown and downtown a direct hit, there were people who were simply trying to get out of the storm's path and we're trapped uh, as we just were talking to our producer wit here i know that there was someone in this car uh, who is in the, the middle of this watch your feet sorry there's a lot of debris out here as you can imagine uh some nails i believe this is this looks like it was a uh number from a sign uh i think off of the gas station over here from the auto parts store uh, that's just sitting in the middle of the ground here you can just tell uh kind of the devastation that this all caused We've got some firefighters here from the first uh, fire department who are now uh, with flashlights kind of going uh, building to building here, uh, trying to check on folks uh, because this did happen so quickly. Uh, Dan, you want, let's come over this way, show folks where the, this is where the Kroger is here on Rosa Parks, uh, just to give you some perspective. Uh, uh, let's let's uh, also remind folks if you are at home right now, uh, don't go out if you don't need to. Uh, this is kind of something that's happening. Firefighters are just trying to get their job done and they're out here and folks are trying to drive through. Uh, you know, this is something that probably people in downtown Nashville have never seen before. And uh, Bree, we talk about the rotation of the storm and I can see just kind of silhouetted in the darkness out here, uh, the tops of some trees that have just been leveled off. Uh, and you can tell that they just have that, that, that defining signature of, of when a tornado comes through. I've just never seen it in downtown Nashville. I mean, we've seen it in other counties and kind of outside of the city before, uh, but I've never seen it out here. Uh, again, a, a fairly chaotic scene. I, I don't want to uh, be over dramatic here, uh, but it is a little chaotic out here because first responders are just getting here. People are kind of coming out of their homes uh, and trying to see what happened. Here is uh, the O'Reilly Auto Parts uh, right here on the corner of Rosa Parks uh, and Jefferson Street. You can tell that this store also took a direct hit. Uh, important to remember that while we're kind of uh, in a commercial area here behind all of these structures, there are homes where people live. Uh, we just had a hard time getting there. Uh, and so that is what first responders are focusing on right now is getting back into some of these homes. Uh, Dan, we got a lot of live power lines. Uh, I believe up there used to be the sign uh, where Kroger was. A lot of folks who are just kind of out here in the Ma'am, are you okay? Yeah, my daughter was trapped. Trapped? A, a wall fell on her car, so she's walking up through here. Where, and where, were, where was she when, and I'm sorry, I got a light here. Uh -huh. uh, where, what, your daughter, she, she was trapped? No, she's, she's not trapped. A wall fell on her car. A wall fell on her car. Uh-huh, so where, she's walking up through that way. Where were you when the storm went through? I was in my house. She, what was she, it like? <laughs> yes. Okay, as we mentioned, just, just a lot of uh, kind of a very fluid situation out here as first responders are trying to get out here. We will uh, send it back to you guys in the studio for just a moment, kind of get our bearings out mm -hmm. here, uh, and we will come back to you as soon as we kind of figure out a, another spot to show you.
Pri. Chris, thank you so much. You know, just the, the, the video images, I don't know if we can keep Chris's camera up, um, but what you really see is almost the twisting of the damage that was done there. You see the metal that was twisted on the ground. This is a look of the loop of radar of the storm as it came through Nashville. It had a tornado warning on it as it came through Dixon County, and then the rotation dropped out. And then uh, it moved through Cheatham County. There's a severe thunderstorm warning on it. And when it came into southern parts of Dixon County, right around 1215 to 1230, that's when the rotation started to pick up. You see that tornado warning issued. That was around 1230 tonight, 1245. Tornado on the ground. Henry saw it passing News Channel 5. We're in the north part of town near First Tennessee Park, uh, First Horizon Park. It moved through East Nashville over towards uh, Hermitage, Old Hickory, uh, parts of Mount Juliet, uh, Mount Juliet Elementary School. It tracked just near that. The storm system continued through the Lebanon area, I-40 crossing Interstate 40 and Interstate 70. At this point, the storm, the center of the storm, the rotation has diminished. Uh, it is something we're going to keep an, an incredibly close eye on, especially since we've seen in the past how um, the rotation signature diminished and then it intensified rapidly. And that's what caused what has caused significant damage to Nashville uh, through northern parts of downtown as it crossed multiple interstates tonight. We've already seen one live look from Chris Conti. Matthew Torres is in East Nashville. Jason, give me the location one more time. He's in East Nashville, I believe, Woodlawn. Uh, let's check in with Matthew. Matthew, uh, let us know where you are and what you're seeing. Hey, Bree, that's right. Uh, we are just near Five Points area on Woodland Street right now. I want to show you this was so obvious that we had to stop here. This is the basement east on Woodland Street, a popular music venue uh, here in East Nashville. As you can see right now, this really is the result of that tornado as the roof has just been blown off. The side of this wall has just been crushed in. You can see the water line just now gushing out water across this property. Uh, this is quite the sight to see. I did speak to some folks just uh, just standing around here. Apparently the workers, they just closed right before the uh, strong winds moved through and they just made it to the basement. 60 seconds, they say, right before everything started crumbling down. This is the area of Woodland Street right now, just within the Five Points area, where we have fire crews just now traveling uh, everywhere. I just want to make sure uh, to warn folks that there are down power lines throughout the area. Just getting past this, even me who live just north of Five Points, just getting to the station was a difficult uh, task to do. But as we keep walking down, and it's really hard to see at this point since it's pretty dark, no power here right now, but my photojournalist, Jimmy Farmer, he says he couldn't help but notice the condo right across the street with the windows just blown out uh, right now and nearby this condo and we're going to get to that uh, part of the street eventually uh, we saw some down trees uh, which makes it hard to uh, move around here so difficult but again we just want to show you uh, basement east right now here on woodland street uh, just it's amazing and unfortunately we're meeting the folks who worked here under these circumstances but this popular music venue uh, just really in the backdrop of the lightning that you see there still um, it's all gone it's all has smashed in and just crumbled through and uh, folks who are just making their way right now clearly shocked about what they are seeing here uh, right now we haven't heard of any injuries so far but that's just something uh, we're going to have to analyze and wait to hear especially with the uh, fire department just scattered all over the five points area where it seems to be just driving just from observation was one of the harder hit areas as well compared to uh, germantown so if we just keep walking down just from my preview here, uh, my angle, we just have several uh, crews and people just walking around right now. Excuse me. And there you see kind of uh, parts of roof. You can see there the down power line as we speak. I know it's really tough to see right now. Emergency crews everywhere. And this is kind of the shocking thing just from the front of this basement east you can see where really uh, the roof has caved in um, just one of the shocking things it's just so hard to see especially with no power around this area which that's what they're trying to do right now uh, again Bree we are focusing on the East Nashville area specifically five points but I just want to show one more time before we send it back to you uh, what really happened to this very popular 
music venue, the Basement East on Woodland Street. Uh, the kind of the juxtaposition of this popular, I believe, in Nashville and just uh, to its left. And you can see what's left of it and all of the damage that's caused by this tornado. Water gushing out as we continue to see really the contents of what is left inside this bar. And from what I'm told, workers, again, were able to just uh, sneak their way to the basement of this bar 60 seconds before everything caved in. Uh, talking about a sight to see, Bree, we'll send it back over to you. Matthew, thank you so much. Leland is also joining me now. Um, and you were saying that when you were driving in today that uh, the Jefferson Street Bridge was impassable. Uh, yeah, Jefferson Street Bridge is impassable. So for folks who know that area, right where Top Golf is at, uh, there's also right in front of them like a, a, a budget rent a car and a U-Haul across the street. That intersection is shut down. There are power poles, those big metal ones. There are power poles laying across the street. I actually had to maneuver my way back around and then come down James Robertson exit off of I-65 right there there's actually on the northbound lane there is an uh, fedex truck that is overturned then you get off of a jefferson street there's a lot of debris so be careful out there right now even if not much has happened where you're at there, there's a lot of debris and roadways out there power lines that are down so folks need to be extremely careful you know and you came in and immediately pulled up uh, um, st a school watch storm watch yes. thinking schools but with tomorrow being election day they're all out uh, and if that had not been the case, they likely would have been out. Yeah, some of them were out. I think Metro actually was planning, was, was still in for today, yes. So, uh, but I did, actually, I texted Dr. Battle. I, said, I know she's got a crew of folks who are looking at some things, but have just uh, suggested to her that they consider a delay or just closing all together today uh, just because of what's out there. And power outages, I think we're right now maybe running on generator power here, but places right around the station are without power right now. When that tornado went through, so we are just about a block away from First Horizon Park, what was First Tennessee Park, uh, where the sounds play. We had probably half a dozen power flashes in mm -hmm. the studio. We lost lights in the studio at one point. Henry saw the tornado as it passed just north of downtown. Now, it is important to know there are still severe thunderstorm warnings outside right now, although there are no tornado warnings, but our tornado threat isn't completely over. So I know folks are terrified, they are shocked, and they are weary, but it is important that you let first responders do the work that they need to do and that you stay with us because the severe weather threat has not ended and we are going to get you through this. Here's a look at current watches and warnings. Significant flooding threat across Trigg, Christian, and Todd County. We had a confirmed tornado on the ground in northern parts of Christian County earlier tonight uh, in the Crofton area. The lighter red shading is a tornado watch. In effect, until 3 a.m., our tornado potential is not over. What's left of the tornado, the tornadic storm, is bringing severe thunderstorms through Jackson and Putnam County. That's the yellow that you see extend eastward across I-40 out of Nashville. Now, on the back side of it, look towards Benton County. There is a new severe thunderstorm warning there. We are keeping a very close eye on that storm because it looks to take a similar track of the tornado warned storm. So here's a look at some of those severe thunderstorms. It's right on the uh, Sumner County, Wilson County border. So in between Castilian Springs and Lebanon, uh, that uh, the, a stronger portion of that, what was the tornado warned portion of that, uh, has a warning in effect for Jackson, Overton, Putnam and Smith County until 215. The main concern here is hail upwards of two inches in size and 60 mile per hour winds. Here's a storm track on the leading edge. This is what what the storm that created the tornado that went through downtown Nashville. So 154 Cookville, this is four minutes. Don't uh, do not mess with this storm. Get down to that lowest, most interior level. There are damage reports still coming in from Benton County when this went through from parts of Dixon County as this storm system went through. This storm system traveled a good 60 miles potentially with that tornado on the ground. Early estimates just from visual confirmations and early damage reports are potentially EF2 to EF3 strength. Of course, the National Weather Service will go out and survey that. Unfortunately, I just mentioned uh, that we can't turn our back on this storm. The National Weather Service has just issued a tornado warning for Jackson, Overton, and Putnam counties until 2:15. This is the exact same storm that dropped a tornado in Nashville and moved quickly into parts of East Nashville over towards Old Hickory. You've seen the damage reports that came out of there. You have seen what this storm is capable of. Uh, this, uh, the center of circulation is near Baxter. 
So this is in between Baxter and Cookville. This is right by Highway 70. Uh, the storm has been paralleling I-40 all night tonight, and it continues to show signs of intensification. As storms move into higher elevations, they can often intensify, which can enhance that tornado risk. So really important. Putnam County down to that lowest, most interior level. Think bathrooms, think closets, uh, think whatever can put as many walls between you and the outside world as possible. If you don't have a couch cushion or a pillow to cover your head with, duck down and at least put your hands on the back of your head to try to protect yourself. All good, 159, Cookville, 156, closer to Monterey shortly after 2 a.m. This is not the only storm system. We are uh, of clearly concerned about the tornado potential with this, but I do want to show you quickly that storm that's coming into parts of Benton County because it's following a similar track. So even folks in Putnam County under the current tornado warning are going to need to keep an eye on potential additional severe storms as this next batch comes through. Yeah, exactly. So we'll go to a, a look at a velocity for here in just a second. And uh, this is a look at what's happening right now with the core of that storm around Baxter. You see some of the brighter colors there, but also see right here up around Bloomington Springs where you actually see a little bit of green within that red. So that, that that's an indication there again that you've got winds moving in different directions there. And uh, one color would be the green moving towards the radar, the reddish color would be away from the radar. So when you get them tight like that, there's the possibility that you may have a little bit of rotation uh, through here. So we've got Baxter, a little brighter area there along Highway 70. So those of you near Ward Mill Road, those of you are near Prosperity Drive along State Highway 56, basically where State Highway 56 and Highway 70 North come together. If you're in that area, take cover right now. The latest update has this now pushing closer to Front Street. So if you are in the Front Street area back over around Eaton Road, take cover. Also up around Bloomington Street, uh, Springs right now, from Clemson Road back over to uh, Pippin Road or Pippin Road. Uh, you need to take cover here at this particular point. Let me show you what is up. Let me put a storm path on the leading edge of this storm sail right now, and it's moving here right around to 60 miles per hour. Uh, so for those of you who are back out this way, uh, this is uh, those of you who are near Pippin School, Sycamore Elementary School, the uh, Averitt uh, Baseball Complex, uh, Memorial Gym. Uh, those of you, if it stays uh, together here back over near Cookville, First Cumberland Presbyterian Church. So this is a storm system, as we now know, that has a history of damage. So take cover right now. If you're in those areas that Brian and I just mentioned, this is where you need to take cover. Grab the phone, grab the iPad so that you still have a way to get information and, and maybe stream uh, some coverage. But the bigger thing right now is for your family to take cover. These things, as we saw a moment ago with Skycam, they are hard to see, so we need to take cover at this point. Rain wrapped, incredibly quick moving, 50 miles per hour. That is highway speed with these storm systems as they come through. Uh, so Putnam County, Cookville, you are under the gun right now. Make sure you're in that lowest, most interior level. Everyone inside, lowest, most interior levels. We continue to have additional storms develop even out to the west. We are not done with our severe weather threat as we head into the evening hours. Clearly, our primary focus remains with the tornado worn storm that's now coming into western parts of Cookville and eventually we'll work towards the Monterey area about 210. This is as real as it gets down to that lowest, most interior level. Also seeing some strengthening of that storm uh, right along I-40. And there were some concerns tonight that this may have crossed the interstate a couple times. Now, um, we continue to keep an eye on the severe weather threat, but we are also uh, getting our first images of the damage that has been done tonight from the storms that we have had this thus far. Saying... Here's a, a live check. Go ahead, Chris. Let us know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Bri, I'll, I'll preface this again by saying if you need to interrupt us at any time, please just jump in. Uh, we have just gotten to another section of Germantown here. I, I'm honestly speechless. Um, as you look down what I believe is Monroe, I'm trying to figure out exactly where we are, you can see just home after home here. Uh, some of these tall skinnies where the windows were blown out, presumably people uh, were sleeping inside. We've been watching uh, the Nashville firefighters. Dan, if you want to come with me here, uh, you can see I mean, just power poles that were snapped, front facades of brick that were torn away here. And of course, the most terrifying thing about all of this is this was in the middle of the night, so people were just sleeping at home in the comfort uh, you know, of their own homes. It's hard to see out here because obviously it's almost two in the morning and it's pretty dark. Um, people are just assessing, are you okay in there? Yeah, we're good. You're okay? Okay. Uh, there's a lot of folks out here who were inside their homes when this happened. Uh, you can see 
a decent amount of damage out here. Uh, we do want to remind folks, again, as we've been saying before, if you are not in uh, imminent danger right now, if you are not in a place you know, where you need to be rescued, don't call 911, even though this is so incredibly terrifying to look at, especially when you think about the people. You okay? Yeah. yeah. A lot of folks who are out here uh, who are inside. Uh, Dan, just take a look. You can see, again, it's hard to understand right now because it's so dark out. Uh, but as I look up into the sky and I can see the silhouettes of trees uh, that are here in Germantown, you can just tell uh, the, the, the tornado came through and snapped them down uh, on top uh, on top of each other. There uh, is a bit of an odor of gas that has been kind of permeating uh, this area. So we've been trying to be careful here. Uh, again, this was oh, the front of the first. I'm trying to remember which apartment building this was here, 515. Um, and you can see just the kind of damage here. I, I, I think, Bree, what is... An, Leland, what is just so astonishing about all this is that we are just standing in the middle of downtown Nashville right now, that this storm went directly through uh, the middle of the city. We'll try to get you over here. I think what uh, is going to be the biggest challenge, of course, until the sun comes up is light. Uh, once the sun gets up here, uh, this is just going to be devastating to look at. As we've been walking around Germantown, and this is not an over-exaggeration, this is the kind of damage that is probably going to take weeks and months to clean up from, uh, not days hey, or hours. Morning. Uh, just get, given the full scope of kind of what we've seen here. Guys, I will throw it back to you in the studio for now and we'll come back to you uh, as soon as we get a better look of Germantown here. So unfortunately, we're going to continue to see images like this. Damage reports continue to come in. We're getting reports now that the Kroger on Monroe, the front of it appears to have been uh, blown out. Shopping carts, large pieces of metal strewn across the parking lot. Uh, our eyes are now in parts of Putnam County, closer mm -hmm. to Cookville. Yes. That's where we have a tornado warning in effect until 215. The pinks and greens that uh, pulled up there near Highway 70, and you just saw another scan come through. So the greatest area of concern for this tornado is just west of Cookville. It's it, the tiniest area where you see the green and the pink close to each other right on top of Highway 70. So this is near Ridgedale Drive, West Jackson Street, Benton Young Road, West 7th Street. This is a highly populated area. I know Henry or uh, Leland, you pulled up our Skynet camera in the Cookville area as well. Uh, lots of lightning flashes clearly illuminating the sky. The core of this storm, it's moving at 50 miles per hour. It's going to be downtown Cookville in the next three to five minutes uh, tops. And you can even see the temperature there still six, near 60 degrees. There is so much fuel that these storms are still working off of. Typically we get into the overnight hours and we run out of some of this fuel that has not been the setup tonight. And unfortunately we're seeing just the incredible consequences of this storm that came through. Uh, so this tornado warning that is in effect for the Cookville area. So this is central parts of Putnam County. This is the same storm that went through Nashville. You just saw the damage that it did from Chris Conti. Uh, the rotation uh, signature diminished as it went through Smith County, but it has now intensified. Cookville Regional Medical Center under the gun with this one. Uh, same thing, Cookville High School. That's where the center of circulation continues to track. Yeah, and uh, look at this area right here. So you see Cookville there, kind of the, uh, where they consider the center there, right off of I-40 I, I there, and just north of uh, Highway 70 North. So those of you who are along uh, West 9th Street, uh, right now West uh, 6th Street, uh, you need to be taking cover at this point. Some of this was just near the Crescent Drive area, so you may be on the backside of this from Crescent and drive uh, down the Holder Avenue. Uh, but those of you, again, West 9th, and you see those colors there, that brighter white color there, indication there that we may have a little bit of rotation that's going on there. If you're along uh, North Whitney Avenue, uh, North Dixie Avenue, uh, North uh, Jefferson Street. Now, a lot of folks know that name, Jefferson Street, because that's one of the, the main exits for folks who do that east-west trip from here to, to, to Knoxville. And uh, one of the streets that they uh, exit that they get off is, uh, is Jefferson Street. So if, if you are just on on the uh, north side there of I-40 back near Highway 70, you need to take cover here at this particular point. So we're seeing uh, our Skynet camera. Actually, it just went black here. So I saw the, the lights illuminating the sky. There were some significant lightning flashes, and it looks like perhaps we may have lost power to that camera uh, because it was well illuminated earlier. The core of this storm they're coming now, the lights back on right now. We'll go back, back over there for you a second. But yeah, I think they took a lightning hit there for just a second. And we took many lightning hits tonight. There's been significant power surges. That's a big concern for safety with power lines down. You don't want to go outside with the system. The core area of concern for this tornado warning 
Warren Cell is now moving into the downtown Cookville area uh, uh, near Highway 111 as it moves to the east, it's moving incredibly quickly uh, near East Broad Street. Uh, the circulation has been very close to I-40 tonight, and it continues to be incredibly close to that interstate. It's looked like a couple times it may have even crossed the interstate. Yeah, and a lot of folks, again, as we say, travel that area frequently between going here to Knoxville. So they know that area along I-40 very quickly there. Some as you right to get in the, to the Cookville, there's that big cross there on the uh, right-hand side of the roadway. Uh, big exit there is exit 287 for a lot of folks to do that food stop on their way up that way. So this is that area that we're talking about right now, moving through the Cookville area where there is this big area of concern. Also seeing a little bit of activity there just south of I-40 as well. But as we uh, look right along I-40, actually north side and south side right now are two areas of concern with this storm system as it makes its way through this area. So if you are along I-40, north side, south side, you need to take cover right now. Uh, grab iPad, grab phone, something that will allow you to still get weather information. If you've got a newer weather radio, grab bit take it with you as well but if you are in that area right now we need for you to take cover again this has a history of doing damage and we'll show you more activity from around nashville here in a bit where parts near downtown and over into the germantown area along jefferson street here took a big hit uh, just after midnight this has some area of concern and we continue to see especially mm -hmm. brie uh, that area that just under the word cookville and along i-40 right now is another area of concern right those bright pinks so the color represents the speed of the wind and that bright pink color that's indicative of wind speeds as high as potentially even 100 miles per hour. So Leland has zoomed in a little tighter. This is near West Cemetery Road, Burgess School Road, uh, Tenassi Trail, Bunker Hill Road. Uh, this is the loop of that as it's moving 50 miles per hour. That is highway speed on a severe storm that has a, a history of producing tornadoes and damage. The damage reports continue to come in very, very quickly. Now, as far, um, I want to do a quick touch as to what's happening elsewhere because there are more storms and some folks are under severe thunderstorm warnings. You got to know what to expect. Putnam County, Overton County, White County, down interior room. You are under a tornado warning from the storm that has caused significant damage in the downtown area. There is a flash flood warning through Davidson and Wilson County, severe thunderstorm warnings on the edge of Jackson. Same thing, Hickman, Perry and Decatur. We're not done yet with our severe weather. Uh, strong storms snake from Castellian Springs over towards Granville. The tornado warning is in effect for central parts of Putnam County. But when you back it up to the big picture, there's two uh, next areas we're keeping an eye on. Storms that are dropping out of Kentucky very slowly. This has left flash flooding up into parts of our Kentucky counties uh, near Christian County. This is going to continue to sing south, sink southward and will bring more storms to the Davidson County area, Wilson County area, Smith County even over towards Putnam County. You're not done even when this cell clears you. The other thing we're watching is this thunderstorm, uh, the severe thunderstorm warning for parts of Decatur County, uh, parts of uh, Humphreys County, and this stretches over towards Perry County as well. There is a thunderstorm in the northern parts of Davidson near the 6524 split. This is towards Ellington, not severe, but it does mean there's still a lightning threat even for folks that are outside right now. Here's a look at the severe thunderstorm warning that stretches from Benton to Decatur over towards Lobelville. This also snaking up I-40. My concern for this storm is the hail threat that it has, the wind threat that it has, and the damage reports that continue to come in when the original warned storm, the one that came through Nashville, it went through this area first around 11 o'clock tonight. That has had reports that have come in. This is working its way up I-40. It's following a very similar path, and it may bring additional damage to areas that have been weakened. So even if, they're, um, if you've taken a sneak peek at the damage outside your home right now, it could get worse as these next rounds of storms come through. You see how those storms continue to track along the Kentucky border. Very heavy rain remains a significant threat. Our primary concern, though, of course, Leland, is the tornado warning. You see that across Putnam County. Yes. Over, uh, uh, it's now moved just east, it looks like, of Highway 111, just east of Cookville. Yeah, and we want you all in this area to be concerned. Tyler Smith, a lot of folks in the Putnam County area know from the Putnam County EMA, says on North McBroom 
Chapel Area Road. There have been some homes that have been destroyed. Now what you're seeing right now is on radar just south of I-40, uh, but McBroom Road is actually along 70 West that we were talking about a moment ago. And so a couple of streets that I see near uh, McBroom Street would be B and K Auto Sales, McBroom, Chapel Church. Now again, no reports from any of those places I just mentioned, but those are landmarks that are near McBroom Chapel Road. So right now, 201 Tyler Smith from EMA Putnam County says homes destroyed on McBroom Chapel Road in the Cookville area. We've also got strong rotation just south of Cookville. Tyler just putting in some more information there. People are reported trapped on home Partridge Trail. So those of you in the Putnam County area may know that name and know that road very well here. But McBroom Chapel Road, if you are just east of McBroom Chapel Road, we need for you to take cover right now. There is a confirmed tornado here. We've got damage being reported in this area. Also from the home Partridge Trail Road, Putnam County EMA reporting that people are trapped right now. So this is a big area of concern. We've got two areas of rotation just north of I-40, which is where McBroom Chapel Road is at. And then another one we were watching along and just south of I-40 there, uh, not too far Let's uh, from the, uh, the, the Golfton uh, community there for us right now. So we zoom in a little bit closer. You see that area of rotation right now, State Highway 111. I think that's the exit that some folks might get off to go down to Spark in the White County and now that's just pushed in to the uh, second part of the uh, of 70 just south of Interstate 40 there. So we've got Browns Chapel Mill Road, Over Street Road, Watson Road. If you are in this area, take cover right now. There is the possibility that there could be damage with this. And again, McBroom Chapel Road was just north of Interstate 40 along Highway 70. That's where Putnam County EMA was reporting that there had been some homes destroyed along McBroom Chapel Chapel Road, so it places just uh, to the east of there would be the Echo Valley Pool and Recreation Area, Echo Valley Market, uh, the uh, Dipsy Doodle uh, Drive-In. Those are areas that are just east of that road that I mentioned. If you are there, you need to take cover right now. There is confirmed damage coming from your area. Yeah, so the National Weather Service uh, confirming this tornado warning. It's in effect until 2.30. The tornado is observed, so this is a confirmed tornado on the ground, much like as it came through downtown Nashville. The tornado threat is considered considerable from the National Weather Service. We have reports of homes potentially destroyed in the Putnam, Putnam County area. So uh, the greatest signature for rotation, it does appear that there may be two areas of rotation, is just now south of Cookville, so it is closer to I-40. Um, Leland listed off a, a significant amount of businesses there. This is moving to the southeast. It is a right-moving thunderstorm. Right-moving thunderstorms often uh, have an enhanced risk as far as their damage potential, and this has already done too much damage to the Nashville area tonight. We don't want it to get anything else. Here's a look at the storm track of this system. So it's uh, near the Grofton area, those pinks and greens you see right next to each other. Uh, that is likely potentially going to cross I-40 again as the storm system moves to the southeast at 45 miles per hour. Uh, it was, uh, like I said, just, uh, just south of the Cookville area. Uh, here is a look at that storm track just to give you a, a broader picture of where this is headed. Cumberland County, this is on your doorstep next. Uh, Overton County, this is moving towards you. There are two active tornado warnings right now. So one encompasses the north side of Putnam County and the other one encompasses the south side of Putnam County. Let me change the view on this so you can pick it up a little bit better. So we've got two areas of concern. This, uh, the area of concern on the south side of I-40, so this is just south of the Cookville area, and then there's one on the north side as well. So two possible centers of circulation that are impacting both sides of Putnam County, reports of significant damage here, uh, appearing that some of that, the, some of the northern flank part of that storm may be across more of Jackson County, the southern parts of Jackson County. So we'll take a close look at the folks under the gun there. This is just east of Rickman. So near Beaver, Beaver Hill, Highway 84, Columbia Hill, Crawford, Hanging Limb, Cliff Springs. Uh, that's for the northern flank of this storm system. Uh, again, the tornado warnings remain in effect until 2.30. We have two areas of rotation. The southern area is the strongest area. Likely that's what's created the more significant damage reports tonight. But it's not impossible that northern one could potentially pick up even in intensity. 
Yeah. These storms are moving into some higher elevations now too, so that can often enhance circulation with them. It also means that they're farther away from the radar. Yeah, so definitely a take cover and these things are in the middle of the night and they are hard to see. Sometimes you might hear the, 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 the roaring uh, of, of what is up for us right now, but there is this tight area of rotation uh, that we need to get you through here for the next few minutes because there is concern right now of more damage in this area. Bree talked about the one just a moment ago on the north side of I-40. That's the one that went along near McBroom Road, uh, McBroom Chapel Road. But this is another one that right now is south of I-40, but right at the moment is along I-40. And uh, you heard her mention Rocky Point a moment ago. So there is the Rocky Point community, uh, Rocky Point Road, Macedonia Cemetery Road, uh, near Shady Lane at this point. So if you're in this area, uh, please take cover, grab uh, an iPad, grab the, uh, the NOAA Weather Radio to take with you so that you've got a way to still get information. But go to the lowest point in your home. Uh, go to an interior room if you're home, if you've just got a one level. But if you're right now in the Cookville area and you are hearing this, especially along and south of Interstate 40 near Jim Smith Road, Shady Lane, Blackberry Lane, this area here is under the gun right now and that uh, you need to take cover here at this moment. So uh, some additional reports coming in. Unfortunately, injuries now being reported in Putnam County. We will work to confirm that. That's Tyler Smith, of okay. course, working with Putnam County EMA there. Um, there is also reports of potentially a funnel cloud uh, uh, in Overton County, um, right on the Jackson Putnam Overton County lines. So let me clean this up a little bit so that you can get a better sense of where all of this is. Uh, so Putnam County and the northern, essentially it's Putnam County, the northern and southern border that are under the gun right now. I turned the lightning off, but that's still a big factor. Hail as well. So this is Putnam County, the northern edge of this. This is uh, Jackson County and Overton County. So the concern is right where all of these meet for the northern flank of the storm. The southern one that passed just south of Cookville, that's south of I-40, and this is all moving towards the east. So we have one tornado warning that's headed towards Clark Range. And then we have another one on the southern side of Putnam County that's headed towards Crossville in central parts of Cumberland County. There are more storms that line up on the back side of this, but significant damage reports are starting to come out of the Putnam County area. So if you're in Putnam County, get down most interior room. First responders have a lot of work to do. Um, speaking of that, we're going to come back to this in just a second, but I believe... Chris Conti now has uh, some information on shelters. Yeah, especially right now with what is happening on the north side of, uh, of Nashville, just north of Jefferson Street, back in the Germantown and over in East Nashville. Chris, what's the latest right now for those folks who may ha not have a home right now or just have no electricity right. at the and, moment? And, right, and, and Leland, let me, let me kind of stress this to you here as we're getting a better look of the Germantown area. This is one of the newer apartment complexes that is on the corner of 4th and Jefferson. The entire third floor roof was torn off there is water pouring down into every single unit in this building. Firefighters are out here and they have evacuated this building. I, we were walking around and I couldn't figure out why it was so quiet. And then all of a sudden we got to the corner of 4th and Jefferson. And there are dozens, if not a few hundred people who are out here who have been evacuated from this building as firefighters and first responders are going door to door actually inside of this building. I, it's hard to see, but there is water that is just cascading down from the fire sprinklers here. This is obviously not a place that is safe for anyone to be. You can see folks that are out here. Dan, come with me here, who are just standing out here in their pajamas. Uh, we did just talk to first responders, and here is what you need to know if you live in the Germantown area that has been hit so hard tonight. They are working right now to open a shelter over at the farmer's market. We understand that there are a lot of folks who do not have a place that they can call home right now in downtown Nashville. If you do need some place to take shelter, the farmer's market is being opened as a place of refuge. Uh, just people who are out here uh, really in disbelief, uh, trying to figure out exactly what happened. Uh, we were talking to one woman who was inside. Uh, Dan, come here, you can see. I mean, it, it's so hard to kind of understand exactly how bad this is because it's dark out right now. Uh, but the damage out here is profound. I said this earlier, uh, this is the kind of damage that is not going to take days to clean up, this is going to take weeks, uh, if, if not months. Uh, let's see if I can just grab someone real quick who has their dog. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. yeah would you mind just? Were you in this building? No, no we're not. No, where were you guys? We were at uh, one block of Germantown. What uh, What was it like when it went through? Um, we woke up and we heard it going, and it was right by our window. Um, we just went to the bathtub, 
pretty much it, but yeah. I would be evacuated for a gas leak. Okay. Our ears what, popped. What do you think just looking, I mean, looking around right now? It's surreal. I feel what like I'm it? in a movie. What was that? It's surreal. I feel like I'm in a movie. It's just so sad. I, 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 I know. <laughs> you, just, you just have your dogs. Yeah. I, I mean, what? Like, we've got random shit. Sorry, stuff so in our backpacks. So you just have your, I <laughs> mean, and also and really no place to go right now. No, we're gonna it, walk up that way to see if cars can get through, but we can't even get our cars or yeah, turn them on. Yeah, okay, stay safe, ladies. Thank, thank you. Uh, Dan, come with me here. Again, uh, we're trying to give you a, a better idea of exactly what this is like. I, I, I know, <laughs> you okay, Dan? Uh, I know earlier we were saying that if, uh, you know, you don't have to be out here looking at damage, please don't be out here. Uh, but here's something that I have just kind of realized in the last few minutes or so. A lot of these people that we're seeing out here, uh, Brie and Leland, just don't have any place right now uh, because so many buildings and homes and structures were devastated and just so severely damaged out here. Folks are just standing in the middle of fourth uh, in their blankets and pajamas uh, with their dogs. I keep seeing so many people out here with dogs uh, who managed to get out safely when this storm came barreling through. Uh, it is kind of very evident as you're standing here the direction of which this storm went through. Are you guys okay? Yes. Yeah. Where are you inside this building? No. No? Okay. Um, also, there's... Where are we now? We are... Sorry, I'm trying to get my bearings here. Over by uh, kind of one of the Mexican restaurants here. Uh, Dan, let's go back this way. Bree and Leland, also, if you guys need to cut into us here, because I know there's a lot of uh, weather going on back there, you guys just let us know, okay? Um, yeah, give us a quick second to come are, back here, Chris, yeah. just to update folks in Putnam County since yep. we know there's been confirmed damage there. You've got a very telling story there, and we want to definitely get back to you here quick, but I do want to make sure that our friends in Putnam County are aware of what's going on because we have had confirmed tornado damage over there. Also, one new or in just out of the Wilson County area. Uh, I'm not familiar with this subdivision, but folks in uh, Mount Juliet, a report, an early report, there has been some damage there near Triple Crown subdivision northwest of the Providence and shopping center so that's a new report coming in mm -hmm. but we of course want to update the folks from Putnam County on what's happening exactly so there are still two tornado warnings that remain in effect one for the southern part of Putnam County so this is just now south of Cookville that means Cookville the north side of I-40 downtown Cookville you're in the clear as far as the tornado threat the greatest concern for rotation is now in Monterey so it's just east of the Cookville area and uh, the National Weather Service has extended that tornado warning into southern parts of Overton County and then right along the Fentress uh, Cumberland County border. So that means it's going to move just north of Crossville, just south of the Clark Range area. I know it looks very cluttered because these storms are just so robust and there's so much to pick out on. Two warnings, so one on the south side and one on the north side. This is the first one that was issued for the storm, the stronger part of the storm as it moved uh, south of the Cookville area, just south of I-40. Uh, this second cell is now our greater concern as far as what's packing the most punch. It's coming through the Monterey area and the damage reports continue to come in with this. Uh, there are additional severe thunderstorm warnings that are l backed up to the west. These are working their way over areas that have been damaged tonight. So you see thunderstorms from the Kentucky border down through Houston, Humphreys County, closer to Hohenwald through parts of Lewis County. These are blossoming. They're becoming more widespread and they are moving over the same paths that were hit by this storm as it went through Nashville. And a reminder to uh, a quick update as well. The National Weather Service dropping the southern flank of that warning. So one tornado warning in effect. Monterey, we are most concerned for you and for the folks immediately east of you. So this is now moving away from Interstate 40 or Interstate 40 is now snaking further to the south away from the greatest concern for rotation here. Still taking a, a path that's going to bring it near Clark Range High School. It's going to bring it near uh, Adkins Mill. It's going to bring it near the Deer Lodge Academy. It's going to bring it near Stowers. Uh, that warning is in effect until 245. Now as this warning went through Nashville, uh, Henry saw it off the back deck as it crossed through. As it moved through the Mount Juliet area, and uh, Leland was just sharing some of the damage reports northwest of Providence, uh, there was debris falling from the sky at the National Weather Service office on Old Hickory. So that means there was debris falling from the sky upwards of five, even 10 miles away from where our core concern for circulation was. So it's not just where that center of circulation is that has the risk for damage, but potentially some of this that has been lofted into the air and additional thunderstorms 
that are now working into an area that has been incredibly hard hit tonight. Yes, and uh, for folks who may remember, rem remember the 98 tornado, uh, one of the vivid scenes after the hit was the flag the stars of the state flag being, for the most part, being ripped out of the flag. Uh, that was never found, but there were other things from downtown Nashville that were picked up in the East Nashville, picked up out in the Hermitage er area. So that speaks to the power of these storms and the reason we want our fo folks in uh, Cookville and Putnam County to remain alert until this storm warning comes to an end, that you need to take cover with this because there's a lot of debris out there. I had to reroute my way into downtown, and once I got onto some other other side streets in downtown Nashville, there was debris or even just some lines down. So be careful. If you don't have to be out, this is one of those things. Take this to, to heart. If you don't have to be out, don't go out. Do not definitely go into those areas that have been hit. No, and, and there's more storms coming on the back line. The, the National Weather Service just issued a severe thunderstorm warning for storms that are coming into Putnam County. So your tornado warning is over, but now there's this new severe thunderstorm warning that stretches from Carthage through central parts of Smith County to just north of Cookville. So it is, uh, it, it is this warning right here that is the newest one to come down the pipeline. And it is for hail upwards of one inch in size. It's this warning right here that stretches from Carthage to Cookville. That's our newest severe thunderstorm warning. And then we have the tornado warning that remains in effect until 245 for a, uh, this is the same cell that went through Nashville that caused the damage we've been showing you that uh, more reports continue to come in of, of homes destroyed. Uh, there was a report that came in that it almost looked like a, a subdivision had been ripped in half. Uh, that uh, tornado warning continues now through the eastern edge of Putnam County. So as far as who's under the gun for a tornado risk, it's folks just east of Cookville. That tornado risk is now shifted east of Monterey. It's north of the Mayland area and it is moving towards Clark Range. So it's gonna be riding the border between Fentress County and Cumberland County. Uh, it should be gone uh, from uh, the News Channel 5 viewing area within the next 30 minutes. The problem is there are more severe storms that we're going to have to contend with on the back side of this. This new one that has just been issued for uh, southern parts of Jackson County uh, towards the Granville area. That now includes northern parts of Putnam County. We have a flash flood warning in effect for downtown uh, Nashville for the Davidson County area. And then you see this uh, new severe thunderstorm warning that continues to work its way up I-40. These are all headed towards areas that have been incredibly hard hit tonight. Yeah, so be be careful out there. You were mentioning the uh, the Clark Range area. Here's a storm path on one of those storm cells there. So those of you uh, near North Cumberland Elementary School, uh, this is still pushing and racing east at around 60 miles per hour. So think about uh, being in a car 55 to 60 on the interstate. Think about that, that speed right now with this particular storm cell. Uh, so North Cumberland Elementary, 229. Current time is 221, so we're talking less Less than eight minutes at this point. Uh, this would be just along I-40 for us. Let me take off the other, uh, the storm path there. You can see a couple of the other communities that are showing up for us right now. So from near the uh, Clark Range area down to Rennie and along uh, U.S. Highway 127, and then back over near the Plateau community. So you see Monterey. So again, for those folks who do that trip a lot from here to Knoxville, you get to Cookville, you start to go up the mountain just a bit right as you make it to the Plateau before you get to Crossville, you see the Monterey community. There's another little stop there with a Burger King and a Shell station that some people stop at on their trip between here and there. So that particular storm system right now is making its way to the east and here, kind of at the intersection of State Highway uh, 62 for us now, back over near the Hermitage Farm community, our Farm Road, Muddy Pond Road, a Jim Garrett Road, a Piney Lake Road for us at this point. And we mentioned Rennie a moment ago, so this is just almost west of you. Uh, getting close to Clark Range. So if you are along uh, U.S. Highway 127 there, coming out of Fentress County, moving in uh, to parts of the Overton County area, this is our region right now where we've got our biggest concern here at the point. This storm system has a history of doing damage in several communities. We've uh, seen a hard hit area of Nashville. More live reports from Germantown and East Nashville are on the way. Reports coming in out of the uh, Mount Juliet area and also in Cookville for us this morning. 
morning as well uh, along McBroom Chapel Road. There was another one where there were reports of some people being uh, trapped at this point. So if you're in this area here, just as you make it to the top of the plateau there, uh, let's say from uh, just a south there of, of Clark Range and back over to near Clarksville, uh, not over to, to Crossville, be careful. There's Fairfield Glade that shows up. So this is just north of Fairfield Glade. A lot of folks know that because it's a popular golfing area uh, over in Cumberland County. So it's just kind of almost north of that community at this point. So um, clearly that's our biggest concern, but we do have additional severe thunderstorms that are impacting parts of Smith County, northern parts of Putnam County. There are more storms moving towards the areas that were hardest hit tonight, so we're not done. And what may have been weakened, but not necessarily uh, taken down to the ground from some of the storms that came through earlier, once the second wave comes through, we could see additional damage, more power lines down, uh, potentially more damage to structures. We have seen um, roofs ripped off of two-story brick structures that are completely missing and the walls in two-story structures that were knocked down. It almost looked like the building sort of imploded from the inside. Debris has been reported falling from the sky upwards of five to ten miles away from the center of that storm. It sounded like a locomotive as it went through. The damage path stretches through Benton County, through parts of Dixon County, uh, Houston and Humphreys County, significant hail with this system, and there are more thunderstorms working towards Davidson County right now. Uh, I know Henry Rothenberg went out in Storm 5 Titan. He was headed towards um, uh, uh, Tune, Airport, Tune yes. Airport, but encountered too many down power lines wow. to make it to the airport. All right, we can pull up his location okay. right now. I'm not sure if we've got audio from Henry or not, but uh, this is uh, Henry, and you mentioned sp down power lines, and again, places don't have electricity at this point, and we may still be running on generator power at the station. I'm not 100% sure of that, but there are places that are dark right now, so we're still on generator power at the station. There are places out there with no lights, you can't see that until you're right up on it, and that yeah. blocked Henry's path to get into the airport. And thankfully, he did see that. So it's an, just another reason that we really want to encourage you to stay close to us as we get through this, because there will likely be more damage as these storms come through, even if they don't hit severe criteria. Heather Mathis has come in tonight as well. Heather, you are, uh, I know you were texting us as the storm was coming through Old Hickory in the Hermitage area. Sure. And are, are deeply deep in it with us. Currently. Yeah, I came into the station. And I did encounter some debris as well as Leland had mentioned power lines that are down. You know, I grew up in Mount Julia. I grew up in Hermitage. I have multiple family members, friends who are texting me saying their house has been damaged. They know f uh, family friends whose houses have been damaged. Uh, so you don't need us to tell you this. We just keep saying more and more and more damage is coming in. And Bray, as you mentioned, with these storms coming in on the backside of that, there are a lot of people tonight who are cleaning up a lot of people who don't have power at their house, people who are being evacuated out of their house as well. I have some friends in Germantown at the IMT apartment buildings there. They're being evacuated for a gas leak. Uh, a friend who was in that apartment said the windows when the possible tornado came through, it shattered all of the windows out and several neighbors were injured just from the glass being broken. Uh, thankfully, they were not serious injuries there, but those are the people I'm thinking of when I see these storms that are starting to build in again over this same area. All right. Yeah, we're going to pull up a live shot here. We're going to West Wilson Middle School. West Wilson Middle School. We've got, uh, I believe, Jason Lamb and uh, photojournalist Catherine Stewart there. This is at West Wilson Middle School right now. Uh, this is off of a Mount Juliet Road there. And uh, Heather, again, you know that area very well as I, far as West Wilson. I think I was at uh, West Elementary. I'm not sure if that's the same area. but So West Wilson Middle School is right next to Stoner Creek Elementary. I went to both okay. of those schools, uh, elementary school and middle school there. Uh, our directors in my ear saying my kids go there. So I'm wondering, looking at this shot, if the middle school has actually been damaged with that storm. But that is right along that road. Now, this particular road that it's along on Mount Juliet Road will lead you into the Providence Shopping Center, uh, where there have been some reports near that area as well with subdivisions in that area that have been damaged, too. It's looking like there are a lot of police that are in this area with our shot here from our photographer and our reporter. Of course, we are working to get
get more information on this damage. It does seem like, unfortunately, the Mount Julia area was pretty hard hit, along with the yes. Hermitage area with these homes that are coming through. We will work to get you more images just like this of damage, especially once the sun come up, exactly. comes up and we can yes. get a better idea of how bad that damage is. And for is. our parents out there, we'll keep an eye on what's happening with schools. I know in Sumner, schools were out today for Election Day. There may be the, the case in several other communities out there. If our director, I don't know if he knows this or not, uh, what the plan was for Wilson County if they were going to school today. I actually texted Dr. Uh, Adrian Battle with Metro Nashville Schools saying that they need to assess what's up and mm -hmm. may consider to do a storm day. No day on that just yet. They will make a decision later on that. But parents, for schools that were going to be in today, be on the lookout because there could be a host of school closings or delays based on what we're seeing this morning. And again, yeah. that over at West Wilson. Absolutely. Despite whether that school is damaged or not, you're right. Because of debris, they might have some delays or closures. We want to go out to Matthew Torres. He is in East Nashville, I believe, with an update on some damage that's there. Matthew, what is the latest that you can tell us that you're seeing? Where are you and what is the damage? Five points area near South 10th Street. The damage here is unimaginable right now. We just want to get closer to here. This is the soda parlor on Woodland Street and even this juice shop next to it. You can see the windows have been blown out. Uh, all of the debris now scattered on the floor, including the roof, pieces of the roof that really just blew to the ground. I just want to be careful going over uh, the road since there are power lines throughout the area. You can see where everything has been blown to. This is a piece of an electric pole just snapped in half. But Jimmy, if we pan to the left, I want to show the building across the streets. You can see just how bad the uh, destruction has been for this building. You can see part of this electric pole to the left. As we keep panning to the left, you can see where that has snapped and is now just dangling over Woodland Street. This is just one area near the Five Points um, area here in East Nashville, where clearly this is going to be an ongoing um, problem for a lot of people. One neighbor describing this to me as an apocalyptic nightmare and when just walking down the street, we barely really moved anywhere on Woodland Street. You can tell why the alarms in these buildings are going off still and what's crazy and at some point which makes me believe that there's a good chance this area could be blocked off, there is that strong smell of gas just permeating the air right now. This is once again the soda parlor. Uh, the windows shattered, blown off. You can see where this metal piece of the roof just tangled around this tree which eventually bent like a pipe cleaner. But as we keep walking down here, this is where it even gets worse. We are now walking up to Burger Up. This is just right next door to it. You can see where this entire roof just collapsed. You can even see it's just the little things that we're seeing. A fire cabinet, a chair that once belonged to uh, an area where it was covered by a roof, now exposed after this tornado. Neighbors telling me they probably experienced or heard it maybe within 30 to 60 seconds. Um, obviously scared, didn't really think much about it until they walked outside and that's when they realized just how bad this is. One resident who lives just down the street telling me he is traumatized after walking outside to see this. This is after all the East Nashville area, especially at Five Points. The business owners here are close to each other. They know each other. We spoke to one business owner uh, who says she received a call from a landowner and she said he told her, get down here right away. This is once again Burger Up. You can see the water line, just the water gushing from the roof right now. And as this, this is where we wanted to be because every person that we came in contact with, as soon as we got here to Woodland Street, they say, go to Burger Up, go to Burger Up. It is gone, pretty much. And this is what drivers had to navigate around. And we are just carefully as well, stepping around all of the pile of debris. I'm actually just holding one of our lights because it just gives us a better look as far as what damage we have here. I'm actually just carrying it as we're walking around. We are now here at the intersection of South 10th Street. We're not even the heart of Five Points uh, just yet, but this is already the bad uh, site that we are seeing. All of the damage just walking around. Photojournalist Jimmy Farmer with me right now, just getting up close to what was um, what was Burger Up. And it's just uh, shocking to see, especially for people who live around here. This is normally a busy area. I did speak to a police officer who told me some people, we don't know the number of people, but people have gotten hurt and sent to the hospital by ambulance. 
We have yet to find an official that we can get a better understanding of the extent of injuries, if that's the case, and exactly the number of people. This is now the corner of Woodland Street and South 10th, as you, we've been showing you as we slowly creep up to this intersection. You can see everything just scattered. Now across the street from us, you see where the water is still gushing. To the left is Boomba's, uh, which I believe is a brewery here near the Five Points area. And there, uh, people are just gathering right now because they can't help but come here and that take pictures. Dollar, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, there used to be a building over here and uh, we'll continue to assess the damage and we'll send we'll things back over to you. That, um, Matthew, thank you so much. The uh, the boombas that he was just talking about, that's the one that has, uh, it's right next to the YMCA. Yes. Uh, it has the shared playground in the back. Um, there are a handful of businesses over there, usually really tightly um, grouped together. And so seeing that kind of devastation. Just uh, for folks, if you weren't with us when this first happened, right around 1230, the tornado touched down near the Bordeaux area in Davidson County. It passed just north of where News Channel 5 is. We're right by First Horizon Park, used to be First Tennessee Park. Um, Henry saw it visually on the ground. We saw power flashes in the distance. Our station took at least six straight power hits. The lights flashing. Uh, we lost some power in the studio at one point. That's when it crossed into East Nashville, where Matthew Torres was, and you see the damage that it did to Burger Up, uh, th to Boombaz over there. Um, it appears that some of the structures that used to be a part of that of that um, that area aren't aren't standing at this point. Uh, it continued to move into East Nashville, closer to Madison, and then towards the old Hickory area. We have significant damage reports as it moved through Mount Juliet. It was right on the north side of I-40. Um, that's where we have some damage reports north of the Providence Shopping Center. Yes. Uh, the damage was reported just northwest of that. It, it hugged Interstate 40 as it went closer to Lebanon. Uh, significant damage reports coming out there. And now what is left of that storm has cleared Putnam County. So Putnam County, you are done with the tornado threat, but uh, they have extended that tornado warning for Fentress and Cumberland County, which is just to the east. So here's a, a bigger picture real quick. There are three warnings still in effect. There is a severe thunderstorm warning for Putnam County uh, as this final round of storms works its way through. That tornado warning is southern parts of Fentress, northern parts of Cumberland. So that's the far right side of your screen. It's right where it says Crossville. That's as that storm exits. Uh, that warning in effect until 245. So it's got about 10 more minutes to it. Leland, you pulled yeah. up a different look at where the greatest risk is right now. Yeah, you mentioned earlier Clark Range. So Clark Range would be the southern part of Fentress County. And then you've got Fairfield Glade. It's just north of there. And again, a lot of folks know the, the, the name Fairfield Glade. That's a big golfing community that is over there. Uh, this storm right now is now pushing toward the east and getting ready uh, to make its way near the uh, the Sunbright community and then pushing over toward uh, parts of Scott County for us right now. But it's this area of the storm that's just about to exit the News Channel 5 viewing area. Uh, but of, of course, now the damage is done for many communities out there. Uh, but again, right there where you see Clark Range and just north of Crossville here at this particular point, this is our area of concern. And you've got three counties there that are coming into play here. So you've got Fentress County, County there and then right here where we see the brightest area that I just circled uh, that is Cumberland County there northeast of Crossville and getting ready to move out of the uh, Cumberland County area back over in the east uh, parts of East Tennessee and then make its way on the other side of the Cumberland Ridge and the Cumberland Plateau uh, back into the valley of East Tennessee but those of you in northern parts of Cumberland County those of you in southern Fentress County although with this latest radar update just a slow of Southern Fentress County remaining uh, in the uh, the harm's way for us right now, but it's just a couple of more communities there inside of uh, Cumberland County for us right now that we are watching. I don't know if any streets will pop up here this uh, far out, but it's the uh, Genesis community right now, Genesis community. Uh, then you get on the other side of the Cumberland County line. Those would be the Frankfurt area back over around Howard's uh, Mill or Howard Mill and up near Atkins Mill. So that's our big area concern right now. Uh, with this storm system as it's making its way out of Cumberland County and getting ready to move on the other side of the Cumberland Plateau. You know, and power outage reports continue to come in. We're going to check in with Adam and Rory for more information on that in just a second. I do have some information. Jackson County being reported that the entire county 
is blacked out with zero power. And Heather, you have some additional information. Well, you know, Mount Juliet was hit pretty hard and Mount Juliet Police Department actually just sent out an update and you can tell just by their wording how significant the impacts are. They said our community has been impacted significantly. We have multiple homes damaged and multiple injuries. We have requested aid from allied agencies and we continue to search for those injured. Stay in your home if you can and watch for down power lines. So that was a direct uh, comment that came from the Mount Juliet at police department. Of course, they are working at this hour to see those homes damaged to help with those who are potentially injured. And of course, we have crews there as well looking into that damage too. And unfortunately, more storms are working into that area. So we're going to get a quick look at the active warnings that we have in place, the active storms that we have in place, and then we're going to check in to get some additional information from Rory and Adam. So the uh, the storm that came through Benton County, it had a tornado warning as it went through Benton County, Houston, and Humble. Freeze County and Dixon. The tornado warning lifted when the cell went through Cheatham County. The tornado touched back down a powerful, highly destructive tornado. That's what we've been showing you the visuals of touched down near the Bordeaux area, moved just through the north side of downtown. So just north of Nissan Stadium into East Nashville. You saw the damage uh, from Matthew Torres's live shot boom boss over towards Burger up. It hugged I-40 as it went through the Mount Juliet area. Significant damage reported there. It tracked all the way across Wilson County. The tornado warning was lifted across central parts of Smith County, but then it touched back down across Putnam County and at this point is now on the southern border of Fentress and Cumberland County. This is potentially a significant, not just tornado in strength, but a long track system. And there are more storms on the back side of this. So there is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for southern parts of Jackson County and Putnam County. This is going to run over areas that are hard hit. Wow. This means power lines that have been weakened or trees that have been weakened or homes that have been damaged. This may continue to damage those structures by bringing more wind, more hail and the potential for flooding on the back side of it. The storms that hug our Tennessee Kentucky border, they are slowly contracting to the south. That means everybody along I 40, you have another wave of thunderstorms coming through. The severe thunderstorm that came out of uh, parts of Humphreys County, uh, especially as it came out of Benton and Decatur, that is now across central parts of Murray County. It is not severe, but it is packing a punch. Some quarter size hail, not impossible, 60 mile per hour winds. This is going to work across southern areas, which haven't even been touched by some storms tonight. They still have ample ingredients, ample fuel to work with. And take a peek on the left side of your screen. West Tennessee, there are more storms developing there. Those are going to continue to slide into our western tier. And so we are unfortunately not done with the severe weather threat as we head into the evening hours. We're going to get a check with Adam and Rory. I know countless reports, power outages coming in. Let us know the latest. Yeah, Bree, we've been checking in with those crews, Chris Conti out there, Jason Lamb, Matthew Torres, and we've seen in their video a lot of downed power lines and a lot of people are being evacuated right now because of possible gas leaks. It's important to note if you are heading out and you see those power lines out, you've got to stay away from those things because we're getting some big reports about 23,000 people here in Nashville without power. Wilson County says over 4,000 out as you look at the radar right here, Cheatham County Almost 10,000 people do not have power in the Montgomery County. Almost 2,000 people. Those numbers are coming into us. We are updating them as they come in. And as Heather said, Mount Juliet pretty blacked out right now, too. I have a feeling those numbers are going to go up uh, as the morning progresses, Adam. And uh, I know where I was down in Williamson County, obviously barely heard anything. This was such a, a, an event that took place right through uh, North Nashville. Some of the pictures that are coming in, not only from our crews, but on social media, onto our website, it's pretty frightening stuff. It's obvious this damage is widespread. Those utilities, like you mentioned, the gas lines, folks have got to stay safe out there. Yeah, this is one of those videos, like you mentioned, that is coming through on social media. This is Madison, East Nashville area. We're looking at a possible funnel cloud yeah. in this video. And of course, we always ask you to send in your pictures and your video if you can, if that's safe for you to do. It's a pretty clear. This picture. is a yeah, this is one of the best yet it's, as far as a clearly defined funnel cloud there. And uh, as Bree just mentioned, this thing went on and on and on and lasted quite a while. It did, and, and we've seen Germantown really hit pretty hard. East Nashville hit pretty hard. And over in Mount Juliet, we had some live video. Maybe we can pull it up uh, in Wilson County from West Wilson Middle School. This is off of Mount Juliet Road, and it's just been pretty devastated around that area, too. But as the sun comes up, 
um, you know, in hours. We'll get a clearer picture, but we're already seeing the destruction in the dark. So that's pretty eerie when you know it's this bad and you can't even hardly see anything. And both of us drove up from the south, and I have to say yeah. it was pretty noticeable when you hit downtown, right at about the state capitol coming up to the station. You could see just debris start to blow into the street yeah. and the buildings were It was a lot out. of debris, and I yeah. noticed too, Folks, and the weather folks have mentioned this, stay in. I noticed a, a, a number of cars that looked like there were people just out driving around looking for uh, to see some damage. Unless you're an emergency management worker, stay in or a utility worker. And obviously there's a lot of debris on the road and you, you, know, you can damage your car as well. So it's safer just to stay away and let crews do their thing. Okay. All right. We're going to start this with a little bit of a couple of dates here in Nashville history. March 14th, 1933, tornado hits East Nashville. April 16th, 1998, tornado hits News Channel 5, goes into East Nashville. March 3rd, 2020, storm just north of downtown Nashville, Germantown, East Nashville hit. Three huge days in Nashville weather history and we're still just learning the aftermath of this because as they said uh, when the, the light comes up we'll know even more about damage that's out there. Especially as these additional storms continue to work over an area that has just been savagely hard hit tonight by the system that came through. Uh, there were damage reports. There were pictures of hail that came out of Benton County the size of softballs. We don't usually get two and a half inch hail here in the Tennessee area. These were massive hailstones that caused damage. Damage reports continue to come in from Benton County, parts of Decatur County, same thing through Hickman County. And then when the rotation associated with that, that caused damage to homes across the area. We have heard reports. I know uh, we were just looking at um, a neighborhood in Donaldson. Uh, this is a report on Twitter, so we're working to confirm this. The Stanford Estates area being, quote, totally destroyed. I'm talking houses split completely in half and cars in pools. Uh, this is, again, we're working to confirm these things, but the, the, the really the message that I would want to drive home is we're not done. No, we're not done. And, you know, we've shown how uh, power lines are across roads and they're not exactly the easiest to see. The, some of the visuals of destruction that we've shown are clearly quite obvious that something dangerous has happened there, something was destroyed. Yes. The power lines can be a little bit harder, and that is so dangerous here driving across roadways. Gas, lots mm -hmm. of folks reporting uh, the smell of gas out there. Um, so let's go when live to night. Hermitage right now. As you two yeah. continue to talk, let's go live to Hermitage right now. Uh, and, and you two continue to talk about what's up. Heather, you and I both experienced reports of just debris in the roadway and it's hard to see until you're right up on it. Absolutely. Driving in, I know I once this tornado warning happened, I immediately got up and headed into the station and it was very hard to get through damage at some point as we are going uh, into downtown. So this is a look from Hermitage uh, at damage that is out there. Hey, this guys. is just one of many scenes that we have out there. It, hey. Do we have Mike to speak with us? Hello. Hey, hey Mike Rose. Yeah, I know yeah. you're on Can the you guys live. Go ahead. Yeah, okay, so um, I'm on uh, Genry Drive. This is in Donaldson. This is the Stanford Estates uh, neighborhood. Um, this is uh, two, three houses down from mine. I'm at the corner of Downeymead and Genry Drive. Uh, major, major, major damage all throughout the neighborhood. Uh, let me gain up here a little bit. So this is one house. This is my neighbor, Paul Boer, uh, lives here. We'll talk to him in a second. And then just next door, this house right here, completely leveled. Um, this is just within a quarter mile of, of where I live. Um, I haven't gone much further beyond this, but the, the smell of gas is high. Uh, the fire department have come through twice now. Uh, a police officer has gone house to house to verify that, they're, uh, that everybody survived. And so far, I'm unaware of any casualties. Uh, and I, I talked to a, a firefighter who verified that uh, at least kind of in this neighborhood right now, but uh, emergency officials are kind of going house to house just to kind of, you know, verify that, uh, that everything is okay. Let me see if I can uh, catch up with, uh, with some of my neighbors here. Mike, uh, if you can hear us while you're Paul walking. Have, uh, go ahead. Uh, while you're walking, if you can hear me, we're also getting reports and had some pictures sent to us on social media that uh, Donaldson Christian Academy, which is, I know, very close to that neighborhood, was also potentially damaged. Have you heard from any officials who are on the ground right there with you uh, that the school has also been uh, impacted with this? 
Uh, not yet. Um, it's two to three streets over for me. I've just not had a chance to kind of walk down there. The whole neighborhood is, is pitch black. There's only one street in and out of the neighborhood. Um, but uh, I'll, I will try to find that out. Um, but uh, my, so my wife and I were uh, uh, w woken by our cell phones and the alarms going off on our cell phones and uh, ran down to the basement and hid in a little cellar, a uh, concrete cellar. Um, and we could just hear loud thumping uh, everywhere. And I mean, they're just, there's, this, there's a pair of oak trees, 250 years old, completely gone. Um, I mean, just, just unbelievable damage. Uh, let me show you this one other house. The gas has just been cut off to this house. Uh, and the, the, the gentleman that lives here actually plays a trumpet for the, the Nashville Symphony and his, uh, his wife, they're about to get married in 13 days. Um, she d dug through the rubble and was able to pull his trumpet out. But look at this. I mean, just completely gone. I mean, it's just heartbreaking. Heartbreaking to see all this, uh, all this damage. So again, the emergency responders just doing the best that they can. They're, they're being pulled in a thousand different directions. Here they are taking off uh, again. Uh, they're just kind of checking for gas leaks, cutting off the gas where they can, cutting off the water. There's power lines down everywhere. So um, quite a mess, but again, the good news, it doesn't sound like there's any casualties or any injuries, at least kind of within the quarter mile radius of, of where I've been uh, for the past hour and a half. And that's great to hear, especially with these things in the middle of the night, that's always the most dangerous part of this as far as people are concerned. Hard to see, they are asleep, don't know what's up. This is a midnight or after storm, and the injuries so far are not there. We hope it remains that way after we get to first light. You know, and it just, it intensified so quickly when the storm crossed into the western Davidson County border. Uh, it, it, the, the signature blossomed so fast. Uh, the National Weather Service quickly indicating to us this was as Henry went out on the back and could see it. You could hear, um, you could hear that sort of locomotive type noise to it. Tornadoes are, are confirmed by the damage once it is surveyed by the National Weather Service, but just from radar and just from the visual reports, they're already estimating it's possible this could be an EF3 tornado. That would have wind speeds in excess of 165 miles per hour possible with that storm as it came through. And I think what's most remarkable about it as well is just the length of time yes. that this was on yes. the ground and how incredibly strong it was and the damage that continues to come in. I mean, it truly, it looks like buildings have been split apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to put that in perspective, 98 tornado, downtown Nashville, EF1, East Nashville, and the 98 tornado and EF3. So we've got Mo Heider who is out. He's in North Nashville. I don't think he's too far from my TSU. We see damage in behind us. Tell us where you're at and what you're seeing, Mo. Hey, yeah, this is TSU's campus. I'm on Ed Temple Boulevard, just right outside the Ag Center, where the Ag Center was. Just take a look right behind me. I spoke to the president and also the chief of staff of, uh, of the university. They do say this is one of the oldest buildings. Just look at the roof. You can see holes are on both sides, and nearly half of it uh, is damaged. Just an indication, a strong indication, rather, of how strong this tornado was that just occurred. And I want to show you this. Look further down here. This is a chicken coop. And again, this is what they use to house a lot of farming equipment, a lot of things for their equestrian program and for other animals as well. This is a chicken crew right over here. You can see the walls of it even bent over, even this piece of it here snapped off and also bent over and a lot of trash of it to my right. But something I really want to show you, just walk down with me, just bear with me. It's a little dark out here. It also just started raining. But if you go over here, you can see a lot of the equipment and a lot of the siding from the inside just flew here across the field as well. So many pieces of equipment, trash, remnants, all sorts of rubble. And the field is about, just about, say, about 50 yards away uh, next to the ag facility here. And you can see, again, pieces, pieces of the fence, uh, some siding, um, also a piece of the gutter, uh, lots of trash, uh, lots of rubble as well. Again, this is the ag facility that, that they do have on campus. So, again, it's one of the older buildings here from what the president uh, does tell us. So they house a lot of equipment when it comes to... Uh, horses and other animals. You can see this seems like some sort of a fence or a cage as well. This is also bent over, um, pretty much broken as well. If you look to my right over here, you can also see uh, looks like uh, parts of the 
indoors that was from, from there as well. Uh, also bent over, destroyed. And this looks like it's going to be a, take a long time to clean up. I spoke to the chief of staff. She does say she wants a lot of this uh, gone by this week. She's being a little, uh, she says she's optimistic that they can get this uh, taken care of. But again, they have never seen anything like this in, from what they have told me. And they do say that what they're thankful for is that a lot of students are not in session, most students rather are not in session because of the break. They're going to go check out the dorms and the other facilities to make sure uh, they're okay. They do have some people there, but again, class is not in session, so they're thankful uh, no one was hurt. Another thing also, uh, the odor of the gas is also very strong and very unbearable here at the time being. But from we're also being told, no one who lives in this area was hurt. We'll send it back over to you guys. All right, thank you, Mo. So again, report there out of the uh, North Nashville area over near TSU. Uh, an update, we do have the tornado watch that has now been expanded into the area. So again, as we've talked about, uh, damage and the, uh, the at least the severity of the problem not over just yet. No, it's not. We still have more storms to get through tonight. This new tornado watch that has been expanded is going to last until 6 o'clock in the morning. So we need to continue to keep a watchful eye on these storms over the next Next several hours. Of course, we do have Rory and Adam who are also in with us this morning. They have been keeping a very close eye on damage that has been reported around the area. What's some new information that you guys have? Well, our producer just told us in our ear from Nashville Fire. We're getting reports of 40 structure collapses, at least so far that they're responding to this morning. And we have some news for you out of John C. Toon Airport. Significant damage there because of the severe weather earlier this morning. And there are no reports of any injuries that we're getting in right now, but several hangers there have been destroyed. Power lines are down and they're saying just really in the interest of safety, the public should avoid the John C. Toon Airport until further notice because the airport authority there, they've activated an emergency operations center to try to coordinate this response. Yeah, and absolutely. The EOC, not surprisingly, uh, emailing us just uh, moments ago, Adam, they are partially activating uh, the Emergency Operations Center in response to the damage. I'll read to you what they wrote to us that representatives from OEM, Nashville Fire Department, the Mayor's Office, Police Department, Davidson County Sheriff's, Metro Water Services, Stormwater, I could go on and on. It's all of the major utilities uh, are gathering in the EOC to monitor damage reports and respond to emergency calls around the county. This is something we know these guys train for all the time, but this is a huge event with the amount of damage, structure damage. You know, when we just hear that, that there are structure collapses. That's, those are strong words, at least 40 right now. So this is pretty extensive and it's going to test the metal of emergency responders. Absolutely, and as we were outside earlier this evening, emergency response crews just everywhere you look with their lights and sirens on and you can hear those tornado sirens still going out. And this is why, if you're just waking up with this, this is a look at that funnel cloud. We're getting this to us from Madison, the Madison East Nashville area. And if you are just joining us this morning, if you missed the really the heart of it earlier, what we're hearing is, or what we know is, about 12.30 people started to hear those sirens as that tornado touched down in the Bordeaux area. It started to pass north toward Germantown, really took a hard hit there in Germantown. A lot of people out on the street right now, they've been evacuated because of possible gas leaks in the area. And the, the farmer's market downtown, that has turned right. into a shelter right now. Yeah, they are working to prepare a shelter at the farmer's market. Chris Conti just texted me and said uh, hundreds being evacuated in quotes in East Nashville right now. Uh, I'm sorry, in the Germantown area where he is. Matthew Torres is in East Nashville right now and I understand he's live uh, with one of the councilmen, uh, Brett Withers, who represents that area. Uh, obviously a pretty shocking sight for him as well, Matthew. Definitely, it's shocking for everyone to be here. You see them in their PJs, they're stepping out of their homes just to see the devastation behind us. We're here on Woodland Street near South 10th, just across from Burger Up, where it is destroyed pretty much. Council me uh, member Brett Withers with me right now. First off, how are you doing? Um, what was your experience like through really what seemed to be a very fast moment? Uh, it, it was a fast moment. Fortunately, where I live, I'm okay. I'm a little bit north of the Five Points area proper, so my house was okay. I was able to get through it okay. Then I began seeing on social media from folks that I knew down in this area that needed help. So I decided to head down and What is the latest on. update as far as what you're hearing here, as far as injuries, uh, number of structures destroyed or damaged? Uh, there are a lot of 
structures that are, are very damaged, as you can see. Uh, I haven't heard of any serious injuries in the Five Points area. I, I'm still getting updates as they come in. Mainly, I'm really grateful that there aren't any more injuries because a lot of the bars in Five Points in particular were still open at the time that that happened. So uh, some of the bar owners were able to work to get their customers to the safest location they could. We did have Especially some minor injuries, street. it seems like, from uh, glass popping out of the, the bars. What's next now? I know we heard the shelter at the farmer's market on Rosa Parks Boulevard. Anything, uh, as we're speaking, actually, the gust of winds just really coming through. Yep. Uh, anything, any plans for the East Nashville folks out here? I don't know, but I, I think we might need an uh, emergency shelter over here, but it's just really difficult right now for for emergency responders to know even how to direct people to get through this area safely. What is your main concern at this point? Just making sure everyone is safe uh, and, uh, and really encourage people to get to a safe place and stay in a safe place until the morning when it's uh, when you can see what lines are down and things like that. You don't want to get uh, an accidental injury. I know we're still exploring this Five Points area. From outside of the Woodland Street area, what have you seen? Describe the damage that you were able to witness. Uh, obviously, like I said, right here in Five Points itself, there's a lot of damage. Um, businesses with roofs gone, houses severely damaged. Main Street has large trucks that have been turned over in the street. Um, I'm also hearing from further out into Lachlan Springs proper uh, that there's more damage, but I haven't been able to get down there just yet. The folks out here in this area, very tight-knit community as East Nashville has become uh, known. County. How do you think you guys will get through this and what kind of uh, ways do you think you'll be able to get past all of this? Uh, you know, East Nashville has been through this before. What some of my friends that I came to check on were here for the 98 tornado, and so they're like, oh, again, you know. Um, so I, this community will, will come through. Uh, we've got a, a lot of a good spirit and camaraderie over here. Folks are using social media, I think, very responsibly uh, to check on each other and share information. So all of that helps. Perfect. And we'll make sure to stay in touch with you in case information does change, whatever may come about uh, really within the next few hours or for the next 24 hours for that matter. Uh, that's the latest here, but we'll send things back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Absolute devastation there for people who know and love that area. We're getting some new information right now. We're seeing a big response in Lebanon on Leval Pike and SR 109. We have a crew working on that to get some more information, but a big response right there at Leval Pike and State Route 109. You know that area out in Wilson County, uh, it's pretty big, uh, busy exit there on 109. You can go north up into Gallatin and right there along the highway is Leval Pike, runs parallel with with I-40, and uh, they're reporting, uh, just like you said, a big police response. There are some fast food restaurants and some gas stations right there clustered, so hopefully everyone's okay. And we were just mentioning this. Remarkably, so far, uh, no reports, we're going to knock on wood, of major injuries, which is remarkable considering the heavily populated areas that this potential tornado hit. And as you can see from our, all these lights, this is a live look of the area we were just telling you about. This is Leval Pike and SR 109, a lot of trucks you see right here. Big response from police and emergency response crews there. And this is a live look at it for you. And we, when we talk about the time of this tornado, first touching down just after midnight around 1230, that's one of the really dangerous times because people are at home. A lot of people are asleep. Right. And that's that's one of those times you really want to get that early alert to people. Starting in our early newscast yesterday, our meteorologist warned everyone about this being a nighttime event and how dangerous and Bree earlier was saying, you know, keep a weather radio, your phone turned up and hopefully a lot of people did get that alert and get that warning. A couple of things, some landmark buildings we've seen uh, reports of them damaged in East Nashville, including the Basement East music venue, which is so popular. There's a lot of damage there and obviously a lot of damage in Germantown where Chris Conti has showed us firsthand. Chris says that emergency response teams, they are going door to door right now, checking on people. A lot of people evacuated there, Chris, as there's a smell of gas in the area, some possible gas leaks. Right, uh, Adam, that is part of the problem out here as the rain has started falling on us once again, kind of adding insult to injury. We'll give you a better idea of just kind of the damage that we're talking about here in Germantown. Uh, one thing we do want to note, though, as we have been mentioning all morning here, there are a few hundred residents, I'm going to guess, here in Germantown who do not have a place to go right now. There are a number of these massive apartment, apartment complexes that have popped up here that are uninhabitable. And I do not say that lightly. It is hard to see right now in the dark, but the tops of these apartment buildings have been ripped off and they are not safe for people to be in. We have been watching as first responders have been out here uh, with their stretchers, trying to get people who we've heard have been trapped out here in Germantown. Give you a better idea of just kind of where we are. This is Geist. Dan, I don't know if you can kind of 
give folks a better idea of uh, what we're looking at here. I don't know if you've ever been to Geist. Uh, it's a very popular bar and restaurant here uh, in Germantown. You can see when those winds came through uh, around 12.30, 12.45, just the sheer magnitude of the power of what happened here. The entire brick facade on the front of this building was just torn off and thrown to the ground. Uh, half of the building has actually kind of fallen over here. Dan, watch out, there's a, uh, there's a metal piece behind you here. Uh, <clears throat> one thing that we have just kind of seen as we've been walking around, and we'll take you to uh, show you some of these buildings, uh, is that, um, Roy, I know we were talking about not, people not wanting to be out, uh, that obviously we don't want folks out right now kind of just gawking and looking at this, but one thing that I've actually started to realize is a lot of people that we have seen who are out uh, just don't have any place to go. Um, again, there were hundreds of people inside this apartment complex at 4th and Jefferson uh, that there is just, the sprinkler systems have been torn apart and there is just water cascading down into this building uh, as the fire alarms are going off here. We have heard a few reports uh, of some people that were trapped and which is why there's a little bit of activity going on but again if you are in the Germantown area, we've seen a lot of people wandering around with suitcases uh, trying to find some place to go. The best advice that we can give to folks right now as we approach 3 o'clock in the morning is if you can and you need some place to get to, head to the farmer's market. That is where they're setting up a temporary shelter for folks. Uh, I have seen people with their pets there, so if you have a dog or another animal with you, uh, the assumption can only be made right now that because this is such a fluid situation that is unfolding so rapidly, go ahead and take your pets with you. Uh, but again, if you see down power lines out here in Germantown, stay away from them. Uh, it is when the sun comes up and we are truly able to see the magnitude of the damage out here, it is going to be profound. Uh, and I do not say that lightly. This is the kind of damage that is going to take months, uh, if not a year, for this part of Nashville to come back from. That is how powerful this tornado was when it came through about two hours ago now. Gentlemen. All right, good morning, everybody. We are back live here in the Weather Center. Heather Mathis, Bree Smith, and myself. Uh, we are continuing to follow this. I will just say this. Uh, Wilson County Schools are out today. It's an election day, but you just brought up an important information that you just got from your mom concerning West Wilson Middle. Right, so a lot of people were supposed to vote at West Wilson Middle School tomorrow. It is Super Tuesday, so uh, people are, well, I guess it is this morning. It's 3 o'clock in the morning now. These storms have been going on for some time, uh, but there is some question, I'm sure, for people who are supposed to vote tomorrow. Where do we go if those buildings have been damaged? Um, so much damage to get through once the sun comes up and to really see how bad that is. West Wilson Middle School, we have reports of in video of damage to that school. Also seeing some reports in the Donaldson area that potentially Donaldson Christian Academy was also damaged. So we're working to get more information on that. Now we still have more storms, unfortunately, to get through through the morning time. Through sunrise, we will have these storms that are currently in West Tennessee see working across the area. So I do want to give an update for folks who do live along and north of I-40. The tornado watch has been extended now to include all of the counties that you see there in that red color and that goes until 6 a.m. So areas that were already hard hit, more storms are on the way that will hamper any type of recovery efforts to start to clean up. Of course, that will hamper anyone who maybe is uh, out of a house. As Chris mentioned, there were several people evacuated who don't have a sturdy structure to be in. You do need to think of where you're going to go from this point as more strong storms are coming in. Of course, this is a look from our radar. You can already see there is at least one severe thunderstorm warning ongoing in the Madison County area. Area. That's where Jackson, Tennessee is located right along I-40, and these will be tracking eastward as we head throughout the morning time. All right, a host of schools are out today because of Election Day. Metro Nashville is actually scheduled to be in. I have actually texted a couple of times with Dr. Adrian Battle, and I can tell you this, as of right now, they are working, they are meeting to decide a plan for the day. So Metro Nashville schools, 
parents, teachers, stay tuned. Uh, the administration, Dr. Battle and her team are looking at the situation right now and will have an update on their plans coming up, we'll say within the hour or so. But again, uh, that is for Metro Nashville. Many of the other schools like Sumner and Wilson are out today due to the fact that it is an election day. Super Tuesday and just another date in history, February 5, February 5th, 2008, a Super Tuesday outbreak of tornadoes, including Nashville and Tennessee on that day in 2008. Yeah, I just want to give folks an update. I zoomed our radar in to this particular uh, thunderstorm that is just south of the Nashville area. Thankfully, the hardest rain with this, the heaviest rain, the lightning is just south of the area that was hit by this possible tornado in East Nashville and in parts of Wilson County. But we are still seeing at least the northern edge of this thunderstorm where we do have some light to even moderate rain right along Highway 70, right along Highway 40 or Interstate 40 there into Wilson County. So this is not a severe thunderstorm warning, thankfully, but this is a thunderstorm that we are watching moving eastward. The worst of it is not near the area of damage, but we have gotten some reports at least of some smaller hail around Williamson County in Franklin. Uh, this is pushing into Rutherford County, Smyrna, Murfreesboro, and then will eventually work its way over to parts of DeKalb County as well, looking over towards Woodbury, Smithville, and then even down towards McMinnville. Uh, this particular cell is just ahead of that main line that we were talking about that's still over into West Tennessee. But if you are out, you know, family members, Members who are dealing with some damage in East Nashville in Wilson County and it's raining where they're at. The good news is that they don't need to be concerned at the moment of anything being strong to severe. Right now they just have rain showers there. The worst of that thunderstorm is to the south of them, but I know it will probably give people a scare once they start to see some of the rain coming down and they can probably see off into the distance the thun uh, the lightning, the thunder as well. Uh, I do want to take a live view. Remind me again. Aaron in my ear where we're going to be taking this live view from of potential power lines that are down that you had just mentioned. This is John C. Toon Airport. Uh, near Johnson this may be Toon. Henry in yeah. Storm 5 I think it is. this morning. Mm -hmm. He was trying to get over to Toon to see because uh, we did have reports of damage uh, potentially there at the airport, but was unable, I believe, Leland Bree to get there, right? Yeah, because of these power lines. So uh, Henry, had a, he, he left around 130, 145 to try to get to this location. And um, power lines being down is a significant problem across the area. Um, the hail damage as well, and you can see crews working really hard. You know, I think there's two components to that. It's the safety risk with power lines, potentially gas leaks across the area, structures that are not sound, but also um, assessing the damage and starting to, to make sure that no one is trapped and making sure that folks uh, have been ushered to a safer place. You mentioned Chris, or Chris mentioned earlier about how folks are just walking around stunned. Um, you know, this was a, a terrifying night and it is still storming in some spots. We don't have active tornado warnings, but we have had massive hail across the area tonight. Clearly you see the lightning illuminating the back of this shot and it is starting to rain now very heavy. There's quite a bit of lightning right on top of areas that are already hard hit. And that is terrifying for folks that are waking up to uh, a scene that they don't recognize. Yeah, definitely so. And as you can see there, lights are out. We at the station are on generator power and actually something that we did following the flood of 2010 where we put power in at the station to stay on. Uh, there is no electricity around us at the moment. With lights out, street lights out, it's hard to see those power lines until you're right up on them. Uh, Heather and I had a couple of our detours to get into the station and even on those detours, uh, no power lines that were down, but there was debris in the roadway. And again, you couldn't see it until right. you were right up on it. So if you don't have to go anywhere near the downtown area or in East Nashville, Germantown, North Nashville, stay put till daylight and then we'll get more information out to you on that. Mm -hmm. We want to go out to Eric Hilt. He is in the Donaldson area. This is another area in particular that we have heard uh, several homes have been damaged. Eric, tell us where you are in the Donaldson community and what you're seeing. 
We're on Downey Mead Drive right now, and you can see there are crews here working, and, and we've heard those same reports of houses being leveled, but I want to show you we haven't been able to see those for ourselves because look at this right in the middle of the road on Downey Mead Drive, this tree blocking the entire road, uh, making this road impassable. Uh, we're being told on the other side of this road houses have been destroyed, houses have been leveled. We've talked to some folks who live back there who have been uh, coming back around this tree. They say their house is gone. We talked with one woman who said this area is no stranger to storms. They've seen storms come through before. She's lived here for years, and this is the worst one they have ever seen. Another thing that we noticed right when we got into this neighborhood is when we stepped out of our car, we smelled gas, and that's something that neighbors say crews have been telling them to get out of this neighborhood, to, to find somewhere else to go because they are concerned about those gas lines. Uh, but again, we're being told that there are houses that have been leveled by this storm just on the other side of this tree. On this side of the tree where we're at, we're seeing some of those same things that are being reported across the metro. Trees down. You can see right over here a power line down. And that's one of the other dangers because as you see, it is dark here. The street lights out, the power out in this neighborhood. It's hard to see that debris in the road and those power lines in the road as these people who are living in this neighborhood are at this point trying to find some place to go as uh, their houses are badly damaged or they're being evacuated by these crews that have been out here for most of the night. We're going to keep monitoring this and and keep uh, uh, up with these families but we're gonna go ahead and uh, where are we sending it right now Aaron we'll go ahead and send it right back to the studio uh, uh, from Don yeah Eric thanks and thanks to all our crews who are out there we want you to be as safe as possible uh, because there are so many power lines and how many of our reporters in different areas Adam have we heard them say the smell of gas is out there. So we have obviously broken gas lines. Utilities are down. Uh, could be live power wires. Everybody just be really careful. Speaking of, people are looking for a place to stay. Mount Juliet has told us they're setting up a shelter at Victory Baptist Church. That's at 1777 Tate Lane. 1777 Tate Lane, the Victory Baptist Church in Mount Juliet. That's the first of, I have a feeling, going to be many more shelters, right? Yeah, with so many structures impacted by this. And another, this is such a Nashville thing. We were seeing on social media, there are people yep. on Twitter right now posting, if you need a place to go, if you need a place to stay, I have beds available for you, you right. know, come to my house. Because as they mentioned, our weather team, we have a tornado watch right now. We're in the heart of this. We also have a shelter set up here downtown. We have one at the farmer's market for people in Germantown, really impacted by this. They're heading out to the farmer's market. We want to check in with Kyle Horan, who is live at, uh, we don't have Kyle right now actually, but Kyle is at Nashville's shelter. We're going to check in with him coming up in just a little bit. And guys, as we go back to you at the weather desk, uh, just watching the damage and seeing this, is it possible that, that after it initially touched down in Bordeaux, that it could have picked up speed and power? Oh, or absolutely. in an urban area, is that... Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we saw that tonight. The storm, when it was uh, in areas west, so when this cell was in Benton County, it was moving around 25 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. And then when it got into western parts of Davidson County, the forward speed picked up to 45 miles per hour. When it was in Wilson County, it picked up to 55 miles per hour, and then it went back down to 45. So not just the forward speed of the storm system, but the uh, but the strength of that tornado, especially when it re-intensified mm -hmm. um, in western Davidson County when it came down, and it roared. It absolutely roared through the downtown area and just continued to churn as it went. Yeah, I was about to walk out the door and was, was watching you and Henry and saw that hook echo as mm -hmm. it started to develop a bit more over in the west side of town and at that point I texted the both of you and said I'm gonna let this hook echo get past I-65 and a little bit past downtown and then we saw what happened with that particular storm but yeah definitely intensifying as it made its way across Davidson County. Say so it was so quick the way it happened because when the rotation weakened across Cheatham County there was nothing there mm -hmm. you know and we stayed with it because we knew that it could have the chance to intensify and like you said once that hook started to drop it dropped so fast and it wasn't just how quickly it developed it was how quickly it intensified mm -hmm. I mean that's really evident just from the damage that's happening across the area that cell tracked its entire way across Wilson County even into uh, Putnam County 
uh, significant damage reports have come out of Putnam County tonight. This is an important thing to know if you are hearing thunder outside, especially if you've suffered damage tonight. There is still a significant area of thunderstorms across the area, but there is zero tornado warnings in effect and our tornado threat is going down. It's not zero yet, but it is going down. Of bigger concern with these thunderstorms, uh, they're not severe, but they are packing some 50 mile per hour winds and the potential for pea sized hail. And with uh, weakened structures, collapsed structures, damage to homes, damage to trees, power lines down, power lines weakened, you put some 50 mile per hour wind gusts on a city that has just been brutally hit tonight, and that may bring more down. So you might have seen an area outside your home or have seen pictures of someone that um, that was able to show you some images of what the what the breadth of the damage is. But then as this next round comes through, it might get worse. So just even more reason that we continue to encourage you to stay inside. Let us uh, show you what this storm has done to Nashville. Let the first responders do the work that they need to do. As far as what's happening right now, this entire cluster of storms is moving mainly due east. There's a little bit of a southerly jog to it, and I expect this entire line will slowly, over the next three to four hours, sink south through the Nashville area, and we'll continue to see more storms with it. Now, this arc of storms that's congealing together, that will continue to morph into one large uh, thunderstorm complex. Ahead of it, this lone thunderstorm, this was the one that Heather was telling you about earlier. So it came out of the Franklin area. It was actually in Hickman County and then uh, went into Williamson County. Now the most vigorous part of the storm is in north central parts of Rutherford County. So it's closer to Murfreesboro. This is also moving due west. This will eat up some of the severe weather ingredients that are out there. So the storms on the backside may have a little less to work with. But what that also means is it's going to enhance the flood threat because as heavy rain continues to move over areas that have seen round after round for what has been going on six to seven straight hours of pouring rain, incredibly large hail, tornadoes and damaging wind, um, that's gonna clog drains. You add just the intensity of the rainfall to that. We could see some more flooding concerns tonight. So this line here that stretches from Camden through Clarksville, so this is Benton County through Houston and Humphreys County. That's where we had the tornado warning initially tonight when it came out of Benton. Houston and Humphreys through Dixon. This is not a tornadic storm, but it is a strong storm. It's moving at 50 miles per hour due east. So here's a timing or at least a storm track on the leading edge of this system. Waverly 318, so that's right now. Springfield 326. Uh, Goodlettsville just after 4 a.m. In general, it's going to be right on top of that I-65 corridor around 4 to 430 in the morning. That's going to be your last chance for strong to severe storms tonight. Uh, that's going to be as a lot of folks are waking up to what has happened in the overnight hours as well. Uh, scattered storms continue across our northern tier right near that Kentucky border. Uh, Jackson, Overton County, significant power, uh, power outages reported across uh, Jackson County. Same thing in the Rickman area. Uh, Putnam County, things should be mostly quiet now. You might hear a few rumbles up to the north, but conditions have quieted. They won't stay that way. This entire line is going to continue to sag further to the south and to the southeast, and we'll continue to see waves of storms over the next few hours. So I'm going to put this in motion because uh, I think it's really going to tell a good story of just uh, how this storm system is evolving. So these thunderstorms, definitely more of a, an easterly component to their movement, but there's just an ever so slow sag to the south. Uh, so this has to clear our entire southern counties, which didn't have any thunderstorms tonight, uh, which means that the area, the air there, there's mm -hmm. a lot of instability, there's a lot of ingredients to work with. Yes. Even the thunderstorms that are running over the areas that were already hit, uh, there's still enough instability, there's still enough fuel even in the overnight hours that these storms are still packing a punch. And I think that's what's so remarkable about these storms today, that we could see such strong thunderstorms during the overnight period as so many people are asleep, as people are going to be waking up this morning with this new line of storms that will be moving eastward. Of course, we've seen damage from all across the area here. I only imagine we will continue to get more reports. Um, just an update out of Fentress County. This just came through from emergency managers there. They say they don't have cell service in the area 
area of Clark Range. Okay. Leland, that's where you were tracking that potential tornado yes. near Fentress County. But the good news is that they say they don't have any major damage there with that particular cell. And that came out of Cookville, where there were some reports of potential injuries and also buildings that were damaged right. there, too. We're about to go over to Adam and Rory for a look at uh, some live look with damage, but do want to share a couple of pictures that have come in. Uh, we've heard several reports out of Donaldson. Uh, these have come in via either my Facebook page or the station social media pages. Uh, if you can do it safely, do it. We recommend uh, just stay at home and we'll get you information. This is from the Donaldson Hills community. Uh, this is a report we've had out of the Donaldson Christian Academy. Uh, this may be the elementary school f from one report off of a social media. And then this is from Cozy uh, Hazlip, who I said, this is Dining Me Drive in Nashville. He said that was actually his childhood home. Oh, wow. So those are some of the reports that are coming in right now. More on the way as we get to daylight. But again, we've got crews everywhere right now now and I know Rory and Adam have been in contact with them so we'll go back to them for a couple of more live shots on what some of our re reporters are seeing around the city right now. Yeah actually Leland we have some video that we want to show uh, at, these photos and videos are, are coming in non-stop we appreciate it this is a midtown near St. Thomas Medical Center as this storm moved through and we're seeing similar videos like this come in where you can with the lightning flashes, you can really see uh, a funnel cloud there and a lot of, um, uh, unfortunately, power uh, outages and explosions. You can see power lines dropping all the time. Yeah, some really incredible video coming in. Everybody's got their smartphone, their cell phone close by, so we're getting some interesting perspectives from really every angle. We also want to get to West Wilson Middle School. We have a live look there right now, and we guess we're getting some new information from Wilson County's EMA. They say there is sporadic major damage in the swath along the entire length of I-40 there in their county from the Davidson County line all the way to the Smith County line. Just that whole spread right there along Interstate 40. They're going to update everyone as they continue to get um, get more information as we work toward daylight in several hours. But there is a shelter set up right now. We want to let you know in Mount Juliet. It's at Victory Baptist Church at 1777 Tate Lane. So if you have been impacted and you can get to that shelter safely, it's at 1777 Tate Lane. That's Victory Baptist Church. All right. We now want to move back into Nashville. Kyle Haran is set up live at the downtown emergency shelter. We talked about this at the farmer's market. It's a pretty big space and it looks like it's getting filled in, Kyle. Yeah, I'm at the Nashville Farmer's Market right now. They've got water for people here, but as you can see, there's actually quite a few people here right now. They're coming from local apartment complexes. Germantown was hit pretty hard. We just walked through there. A lot of the apartment complexes had their windows blown out, and I'm seeing people here in socks. Um, there's some people here that live underneath, homeless underneath the Jefferson Street Bridge. They said they were in tents when this tornado hit them nearly di directly and they had to hold on to all their things tents were getting blown around over there but i want you guys to meet some people that i just talked to a little bit ago this is brandis and amanda right here they were in the vista apartments right downtown and kind of tell me when you realized something was wrong yes so we um heard heard the wind and um got the alarms on our phones and immediately got up and knocked on my roommate's door and we just sprinted out of the building, um, out of our room and so we're running down the hallway, the ceiling is just caving in, just debris everywhere and water is just pouring from the ceiling and like waterfalls into the hallways. So you're in the top floor and this was just caving in while you guys were running yes. out of the building. Did you guys go into the steps, just run down the... We sprinted down the stairwells. People were banging on doors, trying to alarm people to get out quickly, that it was honest at that moment. And we just went down to the stairwell and just sat and camped there. Have you, have you seen your apartment complex? What does it look like from the outside? There are um, the ceiling, the rooftop is missing on part of the building. We went into our room to grab some shoes and we don't have a door on our building. There's no windows. Um, it's it's really bad. Amanda, you're actually shoeless right now because you just you had to run out of bed, right? Yeah. So I just in my pajamas. Thankfully, Brandis got to me in time, and we took off running. Um, it, I had enough sense to grab my phone and just ran. Um, I have a friend who lives not too far, so she brought me some clothes. I mean, it's a, it was it was scary. A stranger stop and give me socks to wear. So. Yeah. I'm glad you guys are okay. As you can see. There's a lot of people here right now. Um, if 
you're watching this somehow if you don't have a place to go. This is where everyone's being told to go to. Um, if their apartments were destroyed or if they lost the windows or they just weren't sure where to go, this is the downtown emergency shelter where they're letting people in, they're having people sign in, and they've got water, um, that type of thing for people here. So we're going to keep monitoring the situation down here. We'll let you know if anything changes. For now, reporting live, Kyle Horan, News Channel 5. All right. We're getting some brand new information from Metro Police. Two now confirmed dead in East Nashville. We know that was a area that was really hit hard by this. That's brand new to us from Metro Nashville Police. Two dead in East Nashville. And when you see this damage out there, it's horrible to think of what it could be. Uh, well, especially, I mean, we're talking some of the most densely, heavily populated areas, uh, especially over the last five, 10 years, these areas like Germantown and Salem Town have been built up and so many people live there in those apartments. As we just saw, they're, they're trickling over to the farmer's market. Uh, Chris Conti showing us the damage. It's, it, it's been a frightening evening for a lot of people. And I just have to say, ironically, as Leland was talking about some of the history of the Super Tuesday tornadoes, we're coming up on the 10 year anniversary of the Nashville flood and the group uh, Hands On Nashville is actually uh, doing a 10,000 for 10, they call it, 10, trying to get 10,000 volunteers together after tonight, uh, we're all gonna have to pay attention because those groups like that, those nonprofits are gonna need so much help to help our neighbors. Absolutely, and earlier Bree was saying as these storms, as you see right here, they continue to move across our area in addition to this tornado problem that we've had overnight and more severe storms, the issue we're facing now, you're saying there could be some flooding issue as these storms move through right now. So there was a flash flood warning in effect for Davidson County. It was allowed to expire just about seven minutes ago. But as this final batch of heavy rain does start to work towards Davidson County, there is going to be some concern for that. And I mentioned it's really twofold. There's been a significant amount of rainfall across the area, uh, but there's also because of the damage that may be blocking some drains. Uh, I mentioned the hail earlier and we've got countless pictures. This was one that was sent in. So this was the tornado worn cell mm -hmm. when it went through Benton County. Um, so this was in Camden there. You see the hailstone at least half dollar size. Uh, it does. Um, there was some baseball size hail that came through it. We just got a report. Metro schools has decided to close tomorrow. Uh, so Metro schools now closed for Tuesday. Uh, the threat for severe weather is unfortunately not entirely done with us just yet. Here's a look at the radar. Um, Chris Conti was just sending me some messages saying, how is it still raining out there? And I know that that's gotta be a sentiment that a lot of people are really struggling with. How is it still storming? Uh, this is a look at the leading edge of storms that's going to be impacting Nashville. There are a few spotty showers and storms down there, but this area out to the west, that's in southern parts of Montgomery County and Dixon County, so from Clarksville down to Dixon, that's the strongest cell that will impact Davidson between now and the sun coming up. 50 mile per hour winds and pea-sized hail. We have had a few reports of pea-sized hail in Rutherford yes. County, so mm -hmm. down towards Murfreesboro. Here's a look at the timing on that. Again, we're about a half an hour away from the strongest part of what's left, making it into Nashville shortly after four o'clock in the morning. This will push into parts of Sumner County, Hendersonville, Gallatin, and then towards areas that were just incredibly hard hit all along I-40 through Wilson County, uh, Lebanon 433, Hartsville 436. Uh, this line of storms, as I mentioned, not severe, but it's 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 very strong. You know, and the thing is, is there I'm sure are so many people who are outside right now who are looking at the damage in their neighborhood, potentially to their own homes. And there is going to be that want to look around to try to get as much as you can done. Start doing some cleaning, even though it's dark outside. But here's the thing. You do not need to be inside of a home that has been damaged right now. We have storms that are on the way you saw from that that Bree just showed you that you only have about 30 minutes in Nashville before heavy rain lightning is in your area yet again. These storms are not severe, but you don't need to be outside when they actually push back across the Davidson County and Wilson County area. Several shelters have been open. We have a lot of those shelters that Rory and Adam have been uh, mentioning all throughout the morning. We are now listing those at the bottom of your screen. If you can get to one of those shelters, we have one downtown at 
the farmer's market. We have another church along Tate's Lane in Mount Juliet that has also been opened. You need to get somewhere where you can get out of the elements for a little while while these storms pass you. And once the, they do and the sun comes back up, that's when you are free and clear to get back outside and look at the damage around your neighborhood and potentially around your home. We do want to go back out live again. Remind me where uh, which reporter that we have that we're uh, Matthew Torres, Torres is there. He has been in East Nashville all morning and Matthew some very heart wrenching news coming in that now two people have been confirmed killed in this tornado there. Heather, we we heard it through you guys there in the newsroom. Uh, complete shock, to be honest. I think uh, so far we've heard from people being hurt. We even heard from Councilman Brett Withers, who at that point didn't think anyone was seriously hurt. But the fact that now that two people are confirmed dead just really makes this whole situation it weighs down heavy uh, on you but in the meantime though we're here on main street just in front of this real estate business where currently we have the business uh, owner and his friends and just workers boarding up uh, the windows right now the cleanup effort clearly already underway they say this is just a time to protect their belongings protect that whatever is inside the window to this building was blown out and shattered and with me right now is actually the uh, the gentleman who owns this business. First off, broker, but yeah, broker. Yeah, yeah, excuse yeah, me. Right. How how are you doing? And uh, what are you guys planning to do right now? Uh, we're just trying to get this. We have uh, broken windows, but this one is shattered out. We're just trying to get that one secure so that we don't miss uh, any files or have anything da more damaged and. Uh, and, and keep it from any more weather getting in there. Uh, you anymore. told me earlier, this is the East Nashville way. Folks already coming together, already trying to reach out to you to volunteer. For sure. Griffin is a, uh, Travis is an agent here, but Griffin is a, a neighbor and, and, a, and a friend friend of mine. And he just immediately got in his car and came up here to and brought the wood and said, let's, let's build a fence. So uh, we're, we're just going to put this fence up real quick and and be protected, but that's just how East Nashville is. That's one of the reasons why we like selling over here and living over here. It's an eerie sight to see that there's no power. It is blacked out here, and the fact that two people are now confirmed dead, it just adds to the gravity of this whole situation. It's 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 crazy and sad to hear that, and definitely uh, keep those people in our prayers and, and just have gratitude for the fact that we're okay. Uh, the road looks like a war zone. It's not anything that we're used to seeing around here. It's, it's very sad that there's that much damage, but uh, we'll come back from it. Uh, this side of town always does. Yeah. Well, thank you so yep, much. Yep. I'm glad you are safe. He, uh, as he described, this is Main Street. This is normally a really busy area of East Nashville. Uh, just picking up the light here as we continue to walk down the street. Um, he described it as a war zone because really at this point, police uh, and uh, other crews have been blocking this now compared to how it was maybe two hours ago when folks are trying to navigate around all of the mess. But I would just want to keep walking down uh, further to the uh, towards uh, downtown uh, Jimmy here on Main Street you can see uh, as I'm carrying this light just to point to all of the damage that we have seen as we get closer uh, down here I I'm not clearly sure what was of this structure over here but all the beams and all the uh, metal parts to this have just been tangled and uh, just wedged in all together just next to this salon again here on Main Street just across from Jim Fide Again, the gravity of this situation, you can see just how strong Mother Nature was and the strong winds just knocked all of this down. I, I want to say this was what appeared to potentially uh, be a billboard of, of some sort as we go across or around here. Uh, again, Councilman Brett Withers, who we spoke to earlier, especially down on Woodland Street near the Five Points area, advising folks to just stay clear because of all the down power lines, not as much as we're seeing here, but it's really all the debris that's blocking the road. Uh, that's really the main concern at this point. Again, police have been blocking this road, which is why it's a little bit empty now compared to uh, two hours earlier. It's eerie. Uh, someone described it like an apocalypse. No one is around here. It is dark. And I want to point to this building over here. Uh, it looks like it was a condo apartment building. You see that chunk on that roof just crumbled, just gone for that matter. And if we go across the street, uh, Jimmy, I'm going to Gym 5 here on Main Street. Uh, we see some folks uh, cleaning up, it seems like. Also, the windows have been blown out. Uh, it looks like 
it's just uh when you take everything in it kind of takes your breath away and unfortunately not in a good way so we have emergency crews down here i just want to point out uh, as they are still blocking this road you see the backdrop of downtown over there we are told as you keep going down that's when it gets pretty bad uh this is one of the gyms uh, here on main street are you guys okay yeah. no one was hurt or anything right no. no so that's what we've been hearing at least here on main street no one was was hurt i want to see if i can talk to this uh fire chief potentially Let's see if we can get any information from this. Hello, sir. Matthew with News Channel 5. Um, how are things going? We heard two people um, have been confirmed. I'm, I'm just trying to ride through right now. Yeah. So I can't give you any information. Okay, got it. Sure. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I don't know right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, again, as we get more information, we'll make sure to pass that along. We'll send it back over to you. Wow. Matthew, thank you so much. And this photo just came in, Adam, of Chief Anderson. Uh, huddled with the other emergency responders in the emergency operations center, which we mentioned was partially activated. Yes, they're busy working right now on these uh, these emergency efforts here in Nashville as two are confirmed dead so far in East Nashville. And um, we have Mo Hyder, who is live right now at TSU Force. Mo, you spoke with the president there a little earlier. What are you seeing on the ground? Yeah, this is Ed Temple Boulevard at TSU's campus. This is the Ag Center from what the president told me. I just spoke to him a little while ago. It's one of the oldest facilities here on campus. Uh, let's take a look right behind me. This is the entrance. And given what's going on here, it's really hard to imagine this is a college campus because at this point, uh, it looks like something out of a... Out of a okay, as you can hear from Mo's mic right there, we are, you know, live in these really destructed areas. So our crews are trying to stay safe as well as they work with their equipment there. We're going to keep checking in with them to get those reports from the ground. But each one of our, you know, we, we talked to Rory, each one of our reporters that are in the field, they're kind of seeing the same scene in different parts of town as far as heavy smell of gas in the area, lots of debris on the ground, a lot of people being forced out of their homes because of either those gas leaks or because exposure. Yeah, and you don't want to use the cliche, but you know, when they say it looks like a war zone, that's what they're walking into right now. All right, real quickly, guys, 3.30 in the morning, 3.37. The headlines are that three hours ago at about 1230, a uh, obviously pretty strong apparent tornado touched down in the Bordeaux area and just started ripping through heavily populated areas through Germantown and East Nashville. Two people dead and metro schools closed tomorrow. And we're not going to even know yet the impact on voting for Super Tuesday uh, today, I should say, as the day progresses. Yeah, we're getting those updated totals for you. But right now, the fire department says they're reporting to at least 40 structures that have just completely okay. collapsed right here in Nashville. And we want to check in with our weather team because we know a lot of times we see that line come through Middle Tennessee. And after that, the threat is gone and the storms are kind of out of here after that strong line goes through. But this one seems a little different because it's still clustered all around us as far as severe weather. Yeah, we've got more that we're watching. So a radar update is on the way. But just to note to uh, Davidson County Metro Schools will be out. Uh, Dr. Battle did note to, to me that 12 month employees will report. So Metro out 12 month employees will report. McLean Academy is out. Lebanon Special was in today. Wilson County is out due to voting, but Lebanon Special will now be out of school for today. So the list right now is on our website at newschannel5.com. But as we know that we've got more dangerous situations out there with the weather. Tornado watch remains out till 6 a.m. now. Yes, and we are continuing to watch these storms. As Adam mentioned, this wasn't just a squall line like we typically see this time of the year that blows through. This was actually a singular cell that looked to come through Davidson County. And Brie, oftentimes those cells can be more dangerous than a line of storms, especially when it comes to tornadoes. Yeah, when we were tracking those earlier today, and you know, and important to note, um, we had a tornado around 730 this evening go through northern parts of Christian County. There mm -hmm. was confirmed damage in Crofton, uh, Kentucky. So that was actually the first confirmed tornado that we had from mm -hmm. this event. And it was the same 
type of storm. So it was a front runner cell. So basically um, kind of a lone thunderstorm that developed ahead of the cold front. That's what has fueled this line of storms that's now congealed together. And we knew that it would evolve. We knew it would start with these single cell storms and they would sort of merge together into this larger complex. Eventually, that's what they did. And the problem is with it, we had two significant um, tornado events. That first one that went through Christian County. Now, I will also note to you, the cell that went through Nashville. So it started in Benton uh, and Dixon County. We'll get uh, started in Benton, Houston, Humphreys, and Dixon County lifted through Cheatham, back on the ground through parts of Davidson County. Look out to the east. So that cell is now about 50 miles east of Cumberland County, and it has another tornado warning on it. This cell has been rotating for almost four hours. That's how strong it was when it came through Nashville. Also moving due east, pretty much riding Interstate 40 up uh, into Nashville, out of Nashville and out of town into our higher elevations. Now, uh, you know, as we look at what the additional threats are tonight, the main concern, of course, is for folks that have been displaced and for first responders. Lightning, a key threat. Uh, especially for folks that are dealing with power outages. Uh, they're down around debris, potentially likely some metal around them of whatever was destroyed. When you've got this much lightning around, that's something our first responders are going to have to be really careful of. Uh, in this box, so there's a larger red box that I've identified from Cookville uh, through about Camden, 230 lightning strikes. It's not just the quantity of the lightning strikes, but look at the negative versus positive. I was talking about this earlier tonight. Positive strikes start at the top of a thunderstorm, so they have to travel the farthest to get down to the ground. Negative strikes start at the bottom of a thunderstorm, and so they don't have to travel as far. Positive strikes have significantly more voltage involved with them because of the extra distance that they have to carry. We're talking 10, 100 times more voltage than sometimes the negative strikes can have. So we have some incredibly powerful lightning strikes that are out there, and more of them are moving into uh, Davidson County, which is where we have a significant amount of crews out on scene. Uh, this is just for Davidson County in the last 15 minutes, 23 strikes, but still a sizable note of the difference between positive and negative. Also, the strongest part of that storm now in central parts of Cheatham County, it stretches from Ashland City up towards Interstate 25. This has uh, an uptick of lightning with it. Also, some pea-sized hail noted with some of these storm systems. Hail, lightning, often byproducts of each other as those hailstones collide. They can help generate some uh, additional electrical energy. It's this light gray that comes through parts of Stewart and Montgomery County. Same thing down towards Humphreys County over towards Dixon. That would indicate pea-sized hail with this final push of stronger storms. So at this point, it's uh, just south in uh, Carroll County, uh, south of the Huntington area. It snakes right along I-40 through central parts of Dixon County, uh, the strongest cluster in central parts of Cheatham County. This is gonna move into Dixon or into Davidson County within the next 30 to 45 minutes. We also have a cluster of storms for areas east, again, not severe, but this is a pounding rain and a gusty wind on top of areas that have been hard hit tonight. So heavy rain stretching through Smith County over through Putnam County. Uh, this stretches into parts of Fentress County. Uh, not as much activity in Cumberland County where Crossville is towards DeKalb County, Smithville. Little uh, small cluster of lightning uptick there. That stretches over towards Sparta, towards parts of White County. And it'll take at least another three to four hours for this to move through uh, as we head into the evening hours. I'll show you some computer modeling so you can get a sense of how this how this night comes to an end, how we wind this down. Uh, so we have this congealed line of storms, these individual storms that are coming together to form one line. Uh, as we head towards five o'clock in the morning, the heaviest will push through Davidson. I expect strong storms to be downtown between 4 a.m. and about 4.45. Then as we head towards five, six o'clock, that should clear the I-65 corridor, but it will continue to work through our southern tier and our eastern tier by sunrise, that's when we expect skies to clear. And again, we're not laying on the cliches, but they also say it's always sunny after a storm. It's gonna be sunny and 65 degrees tomorrow. It is gonna be a beautiful blue sky filled day as that light is now just showing us how much damage is here. Clearly we're seeing the images in Davidson County. We're seeing the images out of Wilson County. Um, but uh, you know, that storm as it came through Benton and Humphreys County, it was packing a punch to it as it came through Dixon County. And, uh, you know, we continue to just start to get reports from those areas. Just sure. the, the breadth of exactly. this system. Yeah. 
And we're about to go to Eric Hilde and Donaldson, but you mm -hmm. just saw a report concerning DCA. You know, we had heard several people on social media saying that Donaldson Christian Academy was hit pretty hard. And now I'm looking at DCA's Facebook page and they say the school is going to be closed until further notice because they saw significant damage. And, and some of the pictures we saw, they said it looked like the elementary school, which is actually detached from the main building there at DCA. It is a separate building from the middle school and high school. They said it looked like it was damaged along with the portables that were there as well. So our thoughts are with all of the folks in Donaldson. Of course, uh, the Stanford Estates, which is right next to DCA, it is the neighborhood adjacent to that school, was also pretty hard hit. We do have Eric Hilt, who is live in Donaldson right now. Uh, Eric, what can you tell us? What are you seeing? Heather, as you mentioned, we're near DCA. I want to give you a look at what's left of this home. This is on Downey Mead Drive. Not a lot left. And there are several homes that look a lot like this. Uh, just wood possessions thrown everywhere. Just pieces of the house still standing that you can just barely tell it was still there. This is a common sight, unfortunately, here on Downey Mead Drive tonight. We've talked with several neighbors who said, you know, they don't have much left, that they're trying to find what they can to take to someplace else because they have nowhere to go right now. I talked with one couple who said they were asleep in their bed and they were woken up by the app alerts of the tornado warning and they decided to get down into their basement and they said they're so thankful they did because their bedroom is gone right now and there's really just a state of shock among neighbors that we talk to and and there's really a lot that of houses that look like this and a lot of neighbors that are still trying to figure out what to do next i want to take you a little bit through this neighborhood and and show you a little bit more if we can of just what uh, what things look like here in down on downing me drive this again in donaldson near donaldson christian academy i'll actually take you around uh, uh we'll go around this way and show you this house here over on this side um an another story that looks very similar you know it it's one part of the house standing most of it just absolutely leveled possessions thrown everywhere we've seen everything from children's toys to christmas cards to things lying in the street as people are now starting to come around to, to try and pick things up uh, as they move through for the night but we're going to send it back to you as we continue to talk to folks and, and and try and figure out you know what exactly happened here through this neighborhood this evening thank you eric eric hilt in donaldson and as we see that lightning still strike around Eric and that rain come down, we are preparing for uh, that other round of big storms to hit our area around five o'clock, as our weather team was saying. So it's important for you to stay near your safe space. And a lot of people are stranded on the interstate right now. According to THP, we know that this tornado traveled along the path near I-40 as it moved through our area. And in Wilson right. County, they say from Davidson County all the way to Smith County, there are sporadic patches of major damage along I-40. So if you are trapped on the interstate, if you're watching this on your News Channel 5 app, you should hit star 847. They will get to you as soon as they can. Call 911 if you are trapped in your home or if you are trapped in your car along the interstate. But they say star 847 is another way to get them if you need some help. They say limit your travel at this point. Right. Don't go out trying to look at damage and all that because this is still a very fluid situation. And obviously we're going to have to, folks, we're going to have to be patient out there because you know the emergency responders are absolutely overloaded right now. Rory. Should also mention real quick, guys, in Lebanon. Go ahead, Bree. We sorry. have a new severe thunderstorm yeah. warning and it is for northern parts of Davidson County. So this is the cell that I was talking about earlier that was packing the biggest punch. Well, sure enough, 60 mile per hour winds with this hail as large as quarters. This is a severe thunderstorm warning that includes Cheatham County, Davidson County, Robertson County and Sumner County until 415. So it's a little crowded on radar to see exactly where this storm is. Let me draw it a little bit closer. So this is the area in the warning. So it stretches from Pleasant View to Ashland City. That's where the strongest core of the storm is. That's where you're likely going to have uh, P to potentially even some nickel or quarter sized hail with this. The 60 mile per hour wind also co-located with that hail. So as hail and really heavy rain fall out of these thunderstorms, they drag the air with it. It helps accelerate that wind speed. And so that's really going to pack the biggest punch. Stretching further to the east, it's pouring 
across Interstate 65, that 65-24 split over towards Goodlettsville, Madison, Hendersonville, uh, right up Interstate 65 as it, as it hugs that Robertson-Sumner County border. Uh, this storm will put a storm track on the strongest part of it. Does look to pass just north of downtown. Uh, that being said, there's still a considerable amount of lightning <coughs> from it, and that heavy rain will dip down into the northern Davidson County area, but it doesn't look to be right on top of the path the tornado took. Mm -hmm. So here's a look at timing. 4 a.m. Goodlettsville, Hendersonville 410, uh, Gallatin 420, uh, closer to um, uh, the Ridgetop area as you head towards 4 o'clock in the morning. Again, two, two concerns with this, 60 mile per hour winds and hail upwards the size of quarters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so be careful there. And as you mentioned, as you look at that blue box that Bree has out there, the, the tornado route was actually just almost a little south of that. But this is the actual part of the warning for us right now. So those of you in Hendersonville, Goodlettsville, the earlier activity was heavy just south of you. Yeah, you had some uh, pretty loud thunderstorms your way around the midnight hour, but the strongest of those storms that moved through Nashville were just south of you. Right now, there's that line from Miller to Goodlettsville back down toward the Ashland City area. Let's put radar back on this and we'll go into the heaviest part of the storm right now uh, from Mount Zion down to Bear Wallow at this point and uh, just about to move into Davidson County. So you see I-24 there, you may see kind of a black line almost in the middle of the screen. That is the uh, Davidson County, Cheatham County line uh, right there for us this morning. So this storm is pushing east. So Forest Grove, Jolton, you got some heavy rain right Right now, but the heaviest part of this storm still is getting ready to move in. The morning community inside of Nashville, similar story for you. Uh, you've got heavy rain, but the heaviest part of the storm on the way. Here's a look at some of the lightning that is showing up with this here on the uh, lightning detection network for us this morning. We'll put radar in and let's go in just a little tighter here on some of these uh, roads here. Uh, identify a few of the streets here. So we've got uh, Jane Circle, uh, Kegel Road, uh, Forest Crossing. Those are areas right now that are seeing some of the heaviest part of the rain. Old Clarksville Pike, where you're near the Mount Zion community. There's another area there. Latest radar update now putting some of this heaviest cell now inside of Davidson County. So Jolton, Morgan Road, Forest Grove. Uh, this is getting ready to move to you. Union Hill School. There's an old school up there uh, from years ago. Uh, Union Hill School in that community up there. Uh, some of the heaviest rain is pushing your way. Yeah, there's heavy rain right now in Union Hill, but heavier rain is on the way. The strongest part of this storm cell is on the way. Let's check to see if we're seeing much in the way of, of hail at this point. And as we go back over near the, the Mount Zion community, got about a half an inch hail. So think of that maybe the size of a mothball or the size of a marble, but that is in this process right now of sliding east. Uh, those of you northern Davidson County, southern Robertson County near Ridgetop, you've got some of this heavier rain pushing toward you. Henderson Village rain right now. You may even have a little bit of lightning in the southern part of Davidson in county, but the strongest part of the storm sale right now is just to the west of you. And we'll do another storm path here uh, on uh, the uh, leading edge of this storm right now. So those of you uh, back to the uh, east of this uh, from Jolton, Ivy Point, Union Hill, Gulletsville, uh, even up near the uh, Gulletsville Middle School. That's a new school that was rebuilt not too long ago. Hendersonville Hospital, as this would continue near and along Vietnam's vet in the Sumner County. So uh, again, Bree, that's our big Biggest area of concern, northern Davidson County, southern Robertson, southern Sumner County at this point. Yeah, so that's, uh, you mentioned the hail threat, the, the straight line wind gust threat, the 60 mile per hour threat. We've been saying tonight, it's, uh, you know, as, as you think about the structures that were damaged, weakened, trees, power lines, you had some 60 mile per hour winds on an area that has been just brutalized tonight. And that may lead to significant increase in damage across parts of the area. Now, the center part of this storm is going to pass north of where the tornado tracked tonight. So uh, I want to draw your attention to both of those. This is the warning. So it stretches from Pleasant View down towards Ashland City. It's actually the, the strongest part of the storm has pulled out of Cheatham County now. It's more in the northern parts of Davidson County and southern parts of Robertson County, right? on the edge there. Now the tornado track tonight was south of this. I'm drawing an arrow in the general path that we tracked as this moved through the Lebanon area. So uh, precariously close to each other. And you notice the storm just to the west of the arrow that I drew on there uh, out into Kingston Springs. That is headed 
uh, into uh, into Davidson County. It will be um, a, a loud, strong thunderstorm that moves into central parts of Davidson County, into Nashville, into the areas that were hardest hit over the next 45 minutes. Once you're on the back side of this leading edge, you will finally be in the clear. But you have to get through the back side of this leading edge. That's where the strongest wind and the hail threat is going to be. There is still rain and lightning on the back side of it. But the wind will decrease significantly once you get on the back side of this storm system and the hail threat will start to go down as well. So here's an updated look at, at that entire line. Uh, so the severe part of it, the northern flank, and then as that stretches further to the south, especially along I-40. Goodlettsville, 359. Hendersonville, 407. So about 10 minutes for you. Nashville, 415. Franklin putting it into your neck of the woods right around 435 and uh, potentially Smyrna around the 450 time frame. So uh, that severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 415. Yes, 415 uh, for us uh, out there as it continues to, to slide east. So it would be northern Davidson, southern Robertson, southern parts of the Sumner County area back near Gulletsville and back over near the Hendersonville area. I say we can hear the thunder rumbling yes. outside mm -hmm. the station right now. So that thunderstorm activity, the heavy rain. This is one, a look at one of our Skynet cameras. This was actually one of the first cameras that we spotted the storm coming through. We saw the power flashes Why, in the distance. Yeah. You see the lightning flashes now. So for folks that are listening that might be feeling a little uh, frightened 